First up is public comment. This is comment on anything that's not currently on the agenda. Let me just hit record for you real quick here, too. Recording in progress. <coughs> All right. Is this something not on the agenda? I think that's right. So my okay. name is Marty Smith. Uh, I'm a <coughs> citizen of Randolph. Hello, and, Mr. Uh, Goss. Do I decide that? Okay, go ahead. Um, so my name is Marty Smith. I'm a, uh, a uh, local resident. Um, I'm a physician, um, and I had an experience last Friday here locally that. Uh, to me, pointed up uh, basically in our rescue system some elements that we have in place that work well, and it also pointed up a glaring missing piece uh, that we need to pay some attention to, and that's why I'm here. Um, I think I understand my time is limited, and you have lots of other things to work on tonight, and I'd be happy to expand or return or whatever is appropriate. I'm asking if you want me to say more or return and uh, be happy to do whatever is appropriate. I guess, can I? Yeah. I'm just trying to follow up. To yeah, in other words, I don't want to derail your meeting. I'm sure you have plenty on your agenda to start with. What you're hoping to get to the committee is recommendations of things you want us to consider. Yeah, when well, we I, look I could kind of, like if, the if, if you'd like, I could kind of zero in. Yeah, and to see if you can get it in like I'll a two-minute. Yeah, that's what I'll try alert. to do. Um, so we had a, had a situation with an unresponsive. Uh, I'll, I'll call them a patient because that's my perspective as a physician. An unresponsive patient on the side of the road here in town. Um, and uh, my attention was called to, to the patient. I, uh, you know, I do what we do, check for responsiveness, pulse, breathing, um, called 911, uh, followed their directives. Uh, pretty soon Scott was there, Narcan was administered, the patient became responsive. A little bit later was able to stand and converse um, and uh, was counseled a little bit by the EMTs. Scott offered me reassurance, a job well done, um, said that uh, their, their policing duties uh, were accomplished and they would be leaving shortly, um, uh, said that the EMTs would be uh, spending a little more time with the patient um, and then uh, that their duties, if the patient was uh, alert and able to walk and show some reasonable judgment that their duties would be considered complete. Um, <clears throat> so then at that point I turned around um, and uh, Scott and his uh, uh, colleague uh, drove off um, and then uh, shortly thereafter the EMTs drove off um, and I looked for the patient and I did not see the patient. Um, and uh, here Steve Bailey was a bystander in all of this, and uh, so Kirsty and I were sitting there <laughs> looking at each other and saying, what, what, what do we do? What's, what's appropriate? Um, and uh, the good fortune was that after a little while, the patient came walking down the street. We were able to I'll much shorten this story. Uh, we were able to uh, coax her. Uh, with help from her primary care physician on the phone uh, to the Gifford emergency room where she ultimately was admitted. Um, and so the missing piece to me as a physician is this is a person that's in jeopardy. This is a, a person that needs help and they need it then. And we did fine. It's kind of a good story. Uh, I happened to see her on the way over here. It's okay. Um, but this is a story where uh, it just shows a missing piece of another party 
be, not being available to come in and pick up a patient at this point and follow them during this vulnerable period uh, to a point where they transition to what's appropriate and seen through a care process to a point where there's sufficient stability to call it a concluded episode of care. And so there's a gap in the middle of this patient's episode of care. And uh, I have ideas for how this could be rectified. I hope it's not going to be some sort of political or administrative process that takes months to uh, find a solution for. In the, in the event, though, you felt like, <coughs> from a, because the purpose of the committee is the police, what is the role of law enforcement, um, and kind of what does that service look like, and kind of trying to define what, what it looks like for Randolph, both in the district and outside the district, but you felt like the role for law enforcement was completed, it sounds like, well. Well, this, it, I learned this is the way we do it, and I don't take any issue with it. Um, are, are you, <clears throat> we're a group getting together to kind of look at the future of policing right. in this country, our country, right. this okay. town, um, and, and kind of a, an overall thing. And I think maybe you're talking about some additional things that we may want to think about as we're going. That's right. To me it relates to the, uh, the uh, objective of uh, establishing an embedded mental health worker and uh, to work either uh, within or alongside uh, uh, policing functions. Um, and I know that that is kind of in the domain of this committee. I know you're, you're focused maybe on jurisdiction issues. Um, and financing issues right now, but uh, to me this is something that should not be low, lower on the agenda. It ought to be, to me frankly, it ought to be on the top of the agenda. I, I wish, I wish Kristen were here. She's on. She's on. Okay. Kristen's here, and uh, Kristen talked, Maury and I talked about this after uh, he encountered, he, he saved this woman's life, really. And um, the missing piece that I thought was here, you know, I, I totally understand why the EMTs and why the police need to go on and, you know, go to the next call. But this is where a social worker would totally pick that piece up and be with that person and provide resources, if not do what Lori did and stay with them and then take, get them to the ER. Uh, if it's a safe situation, they could do that all by themselves. But more likely, they would um, add the additional piece of resources, get them connected to a recovery coach and substance use treatment, or at least try to. And that's really what I have seen around the state, that the embedded mental health workers do on uh, calls exactly like this. So don't mean to sort of have embedded mental health workers called Clara Martin? and other organizations, Orange County Mental Health, Washington County Mental Health. So aren't those in sort a, that, that piece of the pie that you're asking for? Because it's not like our police department are going to drive around with a mental health worker in their, in, their, in their left seat and for every call they're on. And Scott has the opportunity, or the officer has the opportunity, to call those other organizations to, 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 to come in. So to me, that's that's an embedded piece. That's it's a fabric that's throughout the state. That that call could have gone to those to those organizations for someone to come out. Can they not? So the whole point of that embedded social worker would be to ride in that left seat with that officer. So in a situation like this incident, where the role of the law enforcement officer and or EMTs would be done that social worker would have been already there and picking up that role for whatever additional help that that patient, that person, whatever the case may be, instead of dragging on with trying to make those uh, phone calls to the Claremont Center or whatever respected mental health agency 
the embedded worker would be in that left seat with that officer, and they would be on scene with that officer as opposed to trying to call Claire Martin Center while you're trying to nar uh, administer Narcan, doing CPR, and all the other parts and pieces. So you could get a call similar to this or different than this at any point in time, morning, night, day, middle of the night, whatever, any, any time of the day. And so would the protocol be that any time you've got a call, you don't know if there's a mental health issue or not, but most some people might think that, well, if someone broke into my house, they must be crazy. Um, but but, but that, being, that being the case, so when, before you head out to every call, you stop and pick up a mental health worker to sit in the left seat with you? Right seat. Right seat, whatever yeah, it might I be. Don't want to drive. But, right, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm not so stuck in your time. But um, again, but, <laughs> and driving on that side of the road. But but the social worker wouldn't be riding on a, and like if it was a active burglary, it, they wouldn't be riding in that seat going into that kind of dangerous situation. They're embedded for those purposes of uh, having people that are having a, a mental episode, an overdose situation, or all the above. Can we pinpoint when those calls are going to come in? No, we can't. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing. No, no, no. I understand. Fact, I'm actually championing. You know, but no, no, I the, understand. The, the piece I look at is that you know the police department at this point, given the budgets that they have, can't even hire the staff they need to take care of the village accurately. If, if I'm going by what you've been telling us over these weeks, mm -hmm. and so to say, okay, we're going to hire a mental health worker, and oh well, we're going to go pick up the mental health worker along the way to this next call or call them. What's the difference between that call there? or a call to Claire Martin, who also live locally, to, to, to come out and help attend they that situation. They but Joe, the they big difference out. is the embedded mental health worker would have a radio and a call number, and that they would monitor the radio, and if they heard a call that sounded like they might be needed, they might not go with the police officer. They might drive mm -hmm. their own vehicle there. Oh, sure, sure. Or they might go with a police officer. But it's totally different from Claire Martin Center they don't have a radio or a call number. And right, a dispatcher but, could actually dispatch an embedded mental health worker. But, but I, I would suggest, and, and, and at least they used to, Claire Martin used to have a person on call all of the time. And then you, what you're asking for is an embedded mental health worker to be on call all the time, listening to a radio just in case they might get called. And I don't think that that's quite, a, quite the scenario that, that plays out well, unless you're going to hire three shifts of mental health workers. Well, I don't think this is the time for us to dig down into how it works around the state, but I'm happy to provide that information at a later time because this has been going on in lots of different counties and lots of different communities. Well, I think I think uh, I think it is the time over to ten talk. years with great success and great fiscal savings for communities by having an embedded mental health worker. I, I disagree with you. That uh, it's not the time to talk about. It. This is the time that we're talking about additions to the police department as a whole. Of, of well, I was trying to stick to the agenda. Uh, yeah, but this isn't, on the, this isn't on the agenda, and you, this isn't on the agenda, and, and, and Dr. Smith isn't on the agenda. It just, it's just a discussion of doing this. So, thank you. So, so I do think we are going to get there, and it will be sooner than later as we go through the very first cuts of the different budgets. One of the things that we need numbers for, if we're going to put it in, is something like this. And so in order to get there, we've got to pick a service model. So we'll just sort of highlight where that placeholder is in terms of where it goes. And then you're going to meet again next Tuesday. It's sort of a little bit out of cycle um, with this meeting. And as part of that, if we can kind of pick a service model, we can start to pull from some of these other examples of what a cost might be and make sure that that gets in to those documents if that, and presuming that's where you're headed based on conversations to date. So we, we will. We're there a little bit now. We'll touch on it a little bit a little bit later. But through that process, we'll be in some level of this think sooner than later as well. And I thank you for doing coming to share that because it is appropriate right now while we're doing it. And thank you for what you did, all of you. Yes. Um, I think it really drives home the um, issue of what we do need in yeah. multiple areas. Thank you. I just offer that I would be happy to participate in discussions going forward to help find a solution. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Do you have any other public comment? Yes. My name is Ken Goss. I live on Fish Hill, outside the village police district. We have never had the police coverage from the village before, so I don't see why we need it now. 
we have the Sheriff's Department, which agreed is a little smaller than it used to be, but we have the state police. They have never not responded when called. This is not like it's a high crime area. Uh, I can't see the expansion of the village police department out to the whole town when I don't really think it's necessary. My name is Nan Gwynn, and I also live on Fish Hill. And in 40 years, I did call the state police one time, and if, if someone was shooting at someone else, and the state police arrived right around 10 minutes after the call and, and resolved the problem. The problem. So, like Mr. Goss, I, I feel that we have adequate coverage as we are. Nan, can I ask you a question? Yes. How long ago was it that time that you called the state police? Um, More or less? Maybe maybe 15 years. But I, I feel very comfortable with, um, we had some vandalism up there, and not in Randolph, in the town of Bethel. And each time I called, they didn't come immediately, but they did come. And I, I feel... I, I like what Dr. Smith said about a mental health worker, but I'm, I'm here to address the issue on the table about um, whether or not the present police department should expand outside the village limits. And um, I, I hope it does not. I, I feel that we're adequately covered. We missed last time. That would have been our first one in October. So we sent it out a couple of times to you. The September data. There were at least three separate reports. The typical ones we put out there: incidents, um, arrests, and then tickets or issues. I think you also had some data on some other types of calls that was sent to you. And really, it's if you have any questions about any of that, it seems to follow format. We've talked a lot about granularity of detail. I think we were able to get into some time per call stuff that's been sent around as well um, to at least try to quantify some of that. So I don't know how deep you want to go into any of those. I can pull them all up on screen if you don't have them with you. Um, so it's really, do you want to do a deep dive? We've opened generally or included this sort of bucket review as part of it. Um, it's really what you feel you need at this point. Anybody have any questions about the data that came out? I do. This is the one that I'm talking about that, 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 that had the yellow lines. And so all these ones that went out of town were, um, are, these, are these the ones that the state police call you on? What Scott? Are, what I'm, I'm sorry, this, this sheet here, Scott. Are you looking at the Randolph calls or the Vermont State Police calls? I don't know what it says. It says Randolph. Yeah. Randolph PD, RPD, it says on the top of it. It's the Randolph one street. So these were either called in by the Vermont State Police or they were called in by, due to, like, say, the child abuse. That was kind of a uh, emergent piece. The suspicious, you know, and most of these suspicious uh, events were also called in as emergency responses as well. Just kind of quickly going through, some of them were also like uh, the town of Randolph assists like the animal uh, animal problems. Um, but a lot of these were also uh, called in by the Vermont State Police because they couldn't get there in a timely fashion. Right, right, right. So 
Like the tra traffic stop at McDonald's. I don't, I don't know what that, would, that is. But if you take a look at on the other on the far side, you'll see uh, where it says Grant. That was probably done by Highway Safety. I didn't see any line that said Grant on that one. No, on the very far column, we're under the yeah, area. Yeah, say Grant, it just says Randolph Town. Okay. I do, do see one that you have here that says, that, that, that says Grant, you know. So, I'm just just kind of wondering the, the, the severity of call, you know, the state, the state police call you on each and every one of these? Not each and every one of them, uh, right. majority of them, yes. So, and the, the question I, I kind of beg from it is, is more, so the state police of late have told Burlington, because Burlington defunded at least a piece of the police department, um, that uh, we're going to start charging Burlington. State police have actually had contracts with towns to where they come in and do patrols and, and actually, you know, for a fee, sort of like the sheriff's department did here. And so, that being the case, I look at it from the revenue side of it and say, so the state police who carry the FTEs to cover, but they just can't hire, they can't find the folks that, that, that can hire. You're undermanned. You're saying you have like three officers, and I'm, I'm sorry that that's that way um, for the need. However, you're undermanned, and, and so my thought is, is that, are you building, do you build the state police for doing the work that they're assigned to do? And on, on the revenue side of it, if the state police can charge Burlington, can charge other towns because we're going to come in and have a contract with you and provide you extra policing for those natures, why can't it work in the reverse? And you're probably not, but I know the answer, I probably know the answer to that, you know, so about that. Um, you're, you're, you're probably not. However, I also look at it as revenue sides of things. And if the state police can't man a certain call, and they, they said that they can come to the most emergent call, someone with a gun, someone with you know, so whatever that reason, whatever that reason might be, or they call their most urgent calls. But if, if you're being asked to do the state police work, then should an invoice be going out to the state police saying, okay, this is us doing your work. Because you have the FPEs for it, you're just not, you're just not manning it. They carry it in their budget. Mm -hmm. right? So back... And please correct me if I'm wrong. It's that an when, interesting approach. Yeah. I'm sorry? It is an interesting approach. It is. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, back when Randolph PD was here at one point in time, they did try to invoice the state police for out of village responses. And it didn't go over very well. And, and or did not, was not paid. I think it was a different scenario, though. Like I said, I don't have all the Because they were fully facts, staffed, but... and we were fully staffed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of the time it was we went out to assist them versus now they so don't have the staff. Or right. We're doing it in their stead, so to speak. So it's, yeah, I, it's, 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 it's an interesting of... thing to think about, though, because you you were doing like backup or helping them, giving them more coverage at an event or a call and now you're actually covering it for them like that's their area you're providing the service it's also a twofold dilemma because the other piece of it is that you tell the state police sorry we only have three officers and that covers 24 7 365 and sorry we can't take your call what would the state police do like like you said training you show up at an accident on the highway there's three or four at one o'clock in the morning, there's three or four state troopers that are at that accident. They sent one up at, at, at any given time. All the way out of Rockingham to go to a Brookfield accident. Yeah. But on the flip right. side, so. when Scott needs backup, cool. the Vermont State Police come and they don't charge us because it's a state function. So I think right. it's a give and take with the state police and us. I, and, and I think you'd have to be really focused and not alienate them. Well, I think and, that, that and, but I think you'd have to be focused enough to say, okay, are there certain things if you're short staffed that we should charge for or not, but I don't think it's an overall, every time they call us, I don't think that's good relationship building. I don't think so either, and I don't, I'm not as sure it's an every time, um, but we did have the conversation with them when they were here presenting about 
you got this budget, you don't have any officers in it, are you able to help fund? Because they were pretty adamant about us having something, so not giving up completely. The other piece is when they come they here, they come, come to back up our police department. There's a difference between them backing up our police department and us backing them up, and they're on scene, they're just looking for more firepower. Well, sometimes you need it. Right, right. And I'm, not, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not saying that. that that's Although not the they case. do handle some calls in the village when there's no Randolph officer on duty. But do you, I don't know if anybody knows the answer. Is Randolph PD considered the primary law enforcement agency for the village of Randolph? Yes. And Trina, when you just said that they came to one of the meetings here and they were supportive of us having something because they knew we needed it. Well, they were very adamant that they did not have the capacity to take it on okay. and that we needed to do something. Uh, or they didn't say we needed to. They said they really encouraged us to um, because they couldn't pick up the volume because they were understaffed then too. Um, but the, I believe the conversation came up with them of, well, you have money in your budget. Are you willing to share some of that for us to get up and... I, I, was the one that brought, I was the one that brought that up. That, you know, you know, I don't know who we would talk to about that. But I look at budgets all the time and, and manage budgets. And, you know, if you, if you, if you book for 100 FTEs and you only spend the 75 FTEs, you get 25 FTEs with budgets there. You know, you know that, 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 can, that can be spent. You know, until you fulfill it, then you, when you fulfill it, then you meet your need. Right? I, but I, I do see that it's two different services. Backing each other up is, right. is a different service than covering the, because they don't have through. the staff to do it. But I don't know. Not sure how that would go. Not either. It might be a good conversation to it have. It might be a good to, conversation to see to what say. they think they need and you think you need. You know what I mean? To meet in the middle on some stuff. Or I don't well, know how you feel about that, Scott. What your thoughts are. Well, if you take a look at your stats from the Vermont State Police, your highlighted lines are also of what VSP responded to here in the village. If you go line by line, you've also got almost the same amount of calls that VSP comes and handles inside the village as we are outside the village. I'm not going to get into a tip for tack crap because I need them when I don't have officers on duty to provide a law enforcement service to this community. Yeah. And then it's the people that you have to think about bottom line. Right. So me personally, I'm, I'm not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that kind of piece, especially when we're in a position where we need each other to fulfill the same goal. I agree. Good point. Thank you. I think we're good with the September data then. Move on to the next one. Discuss operating options and do the initial budget review. Race yourself. Race yourself. I have handouts. I apologize to everybody remote. I'm having some issues with the screen share in Adobe. I'll try to diagnose those as we go, but to talk review and fix tech might be a little bit farther than handle all at once. I'm going to be with it. i got to get 140 in my own. This might be better for my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this might be better. I'll have two things rather than that. You missed that. You can tell me for the interval. I've got one. I don't know if you want to follow along. So what we got handed out for you, you had sent us away with three sets of tasks. This, I want to be sort of open with all the caveats and the clarifications. This is a workshop version of this. Next week's will be a little more refined. As you work toward the end line, we'll be more and more refined. As I mentioned earlier, we need to sort of pick a model for the embedded services. If we're going to do those, I'll highlight where those would go in terms of what's the likeliest line we put them on. But we don't have a dollar figure in here right now associated with that because we need to define sort of the scope scale and get a sense of cost there. So we put together the basics so you can start at least to see what a budget would look like for each, and it speaks a little bit to how each operates. What we also have to share with you are sort of baseline costs of, for each new officer we add, what does it cost to equip them, and in which model, how many vehicles are needed 
at which point. So as we go through it, we'll work from sort of the existing districts into what I'd call the modified districts, and then from there we'll go into what a town-wide budget would look like. And we'll talk about how many officers in each piece, what changes from piece to piece. In this workshop version, the thing that's consistent throughout all three as well is that the non-tax revenues that are in there for policing remain relatively unchanged until we have some of those conversations. It's been pretty clear that we don't want to try to offset operating costs through ordinance or speeding tickets or any of those kinds of fines. We've left those there. We have addressed the fingerprinting money to make sure that that is uh, appropriate to reality and doesn't cost me anything, <laughs> personally. But um, we left the cops grant in there. We're hoping to make the next round. They're now, they were twice a year. They're now spring only. Um, so we have that at a fairly modest amount. That would help offset costs, you know, full system costs for an officer um, there. So we don't deal with any of that. We are working on some of the tax implications. One of the things that I have to try to clarify with you tonight is when we talk about a modified district, how are we drawing those boundaries? We've talked generally about going up to here and out to there. Well, then going from here up to there in particular, do you want to grab everybody that's got a budding property on the side of 66? What if their frontage is on something else? What if it's just land that's connected to a piece that isn't? So Montague is the easy example. It tucks away. The Samus parcel that's just beyond it, where it's got the little hill there, that's connected to the one across the street that goes away. So some of it's about how do we want to draw those boundaries. Going down towards Shaw's is pretty easy because it's three parcels and you're there kind of a thing. But do you want to extend that in any way around that? That gets into what that grand list value would be, which lets us say sort of what would that be as an estimated tax rate and all those pieces. We can talk a little bit about very broad strokes um, at this point, but as we want to try to refine what the impacts are, that's some of the detail we'll just have to pin down. Um, I think I can show you what I mean. It's a non-PDF application a little bit later. Um, so just to start, we did a little summary sheet for you to try to lay them all out. All the summary sheet has is what was approved by voters last when we do that, April, May. That second round budget, so that's the 524-102. In the column next to it, we put the three different options. Showed you a plus minus in terms of how much are they up from that approved version, and then what's the percent change from that approved version. We started with a defeated budget last year of 771387. So to give you another baseline for what that existing district number could be. So when you start, it looks really huge when you go from approved to 25. That looks like a 57% change. If you take the one that was defeated, you're talking about 7%. Okay. We've also figured out some of the costs we're going to face budgetarily anyway. We do nothing at all. So health insurance. We do a blended rate because it's on a calendar year. We know we're going to get about a 12% increase for six months of this fiscal year. We're expecting at least another 10% for the six months after that. So we incorporate those and we look at the rates. We take the premiums that are approved and we add 10% for that second six months. That's given us a pretty good marker across personnel categories, so that's how we budget for that. If we don't know what somebody costs, we tend to take the most conservative number we can. We did try to mix up the portfolio and the versions in terms of who's covered where. This number gets a lot bigger if it's all family plans for the open spots. Those are about thirty-three dollars to $34,000 of town costs before you get into the employee share. And then when you're on a single plan, you're down around eleven to thirteen. dollars If somebody's on a buyout, like one of the current officers is, that goes down to a $3,500, $4,500 number for the year. So just those things alone can swing that bottom line quite a bit. But since we don't know who we're hiring, we tried to mix it up against all the versions. So it's not just heavily loaded with the most expensive options. We also didn't just say everybody's on a single plan and create fool's gold, basically. Um, and so, to get through the existing district budget as it is, um, when you look at the revenues, the tax assessment is really just the rest of those dollar amounts subtracted from the total budget. That's the amount to be raised by taxes. Um, how many FTEs is that for each of you? Yep, we're, we'll get through those. With each one, I'll take you through how many FTEs and sort of how they scale up. So in this basic one, the beginner one, it goes back a lot to the one that we proposed initially last year. This has with it, you've got the chief, you've got Rosemary, who's the admin and dispatch, and you're talking about four officers, full-time officers, and another, we've got three books, but it's another, not quite half-time of capacity in 
part-time officers. We've got a couple that we, or one in particular, we use regularly that we could continue to use. So there's six total employees. When you look at the benchmarking study, you find that puts us kind of in a pretty similar spot to that. Um, this has a mix for the new officers. Of um, We've got one two-person health insurance plan and one family plan, so we've tried to blend them a little bit. So that but the all-in cost for an officer ranges from anywhere from about ninety-six thousand dollars to one hundred and seven or one hundred and eight. It depends on that health insurance selection. Um, retirement costs are in there; they've been updated. Um, we've got old numbers for dental and vision. They don't tend to cost us much for the year. The vision plan that we provide, for example, um, for a family plan is two hundred and twenty-four bucks for the year. So we haven't moved those numbers. They're not going to move the bottom line if they increase or if they decrease. Um, same thing with dental. The most expensive version of the plan is 15, about 1500 bucks right now for the year. Um, so those are all in there. Retirement, I don't know how many of you followed closely and remember all the wonkery that we talked about last winter, but our participation in the state employees' retirement system and the category we're in, we have a higher employer contribution than we would if we were, say, in the municipal plan for similarly. We're up around 18% in these. It went up to help with some of the, it was underfunded for years. There's been some efforts to try to catch up with that across all state employee categories, anybody in the pool. We're in one with the Sheriff's Department and a few other, I think, state college employees. We were in that first group to get that higher employer share. And so that does add a little bit of cost when you think back to earlier versions of Randolph PD budgets where that rate was a lot lower and or when we look at some of these municipal benchmarks, if they're Beamers, which they all are, it's us and Bethel and the Beamers system and they don't have police, you know, you're down in that 8 to 10% range as opposed to 18 to 20. That adds up as you add officers, it starts to stack. Yeah. Why are we in the state plan instead of the municipal one? I think when we got in, it was actually seen as the more advantageous place to be for a level of benefit. The there was a one-time offer to yeah. municipalities to to join the state system instead of going their own way. That was before Beamers was there. And Randolph and Bethel jumped on. And then I think Beamers came along like seven, eight years after that. I think until the underfunding the 90s. They're, they're pretty it's, much the same. Is it the plan F? Yeah. <laughs> you should switch. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And, and so as we go through that, you see that over time, and we just put inflationary factors with overtime. Um, when we have fewer officers, the overtime amount's going to be a little bit higher. So you'll see that in the existing, as we add officers, we're thinking at this point at least, maybe that'll be a little bit lower so the factor goes down. We don't have a lot of history yet to pull on our own data. So like for highway, I'll look at a three to five year sort of winter schedule because that's where most of our overtime is and we can figure out as a percentage of overall hours what we're overtime hours, what's our average, and we'll budget for that. Some years we miss, some years we're, we make out ahead. We just don't have that data set to pull from, so we're using kind of a best guess factor there. And we'll try to refine that to the extent we can. Um, everything goes in that police administrative budget that we just talked about for the employee costs. Um, there's also workers comp in there. What you see in there is based on um, our current rate for workers comp um, from VLCT passive multiplied by what we think the um, cost for the employees is. So that's the, the wages in this model multiplied by the rate that we have to get you that $34,991. So that's within $991 of, of what we budgeted. As we add officers, we add payroll. The number we're using to multiply the rate by gets bigger, so the workers' comp number will get bigger in each version as we add people. General insurance costs, we aren't expecting too much to change in this version. You'll see it scales up a little bit. Really, it's as we add vehicles at this at this rate. That's when we start to add some general insurance costs. Um, the building is already sort of insured. It's at the value it's going to be at. Um, unless we there's some significant investment in that, it's unlikely to, to change. Um, there technology we've got. We do mobile data terminals through this. We still have the three vehicles in this model, so that's what we have currently. So some of those costs are mitigated a little bit by the fact that we've already built out to a certain standard um, or to a certain footprint. Vehicle fuel, we're still trying to figure out what usage is, what it looks like. We'll 
try to plug those numbers in. So there's a number there that keys off of the one we used for the current year budget. We don't move some of the other ones too, too much from, we come down from office supplies all the way through into um, operating and janitorial expenses. Line 53 is contracted services. When you think of a good place to maybe put the embedded social worker piece, if it's not an employee, and it seems that we've talked to the model where we go into some kind of partnership, that could be where we put that. We could also create a specific line for it. There's just a thousand dollars in there right now to make sure that we don't lose track of it. Um, probably not enough to do any kind of contract, I would imagine. So when we add that in, that will go to those bottom lines. Um, building costs are what they are. The vehicles are all relatively new, so we haven't moved that too much. Um, same thing with training and development. The dispatch is based on what we've got for costs from Jerry City. Just, uh, go back to train. If they go to the academy, which I would assume is kind of going to be at least one of the ones when you expand, do we pay the cost for the academy? There's no cost to the academy, but you are paying for that officer's time. There. The wages. So a, a straight And then, um, but isn't there like mandatory training? Yeah, mandatory annually? training hours a year. And depending on what you go to, there is a cost to that training. Um, with the current state of affairs kind of going on with the academy, if you want any specialty training, you've got to go out of state. And that's going to come with cost. It just would appear to me that 5000 is low. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't you have to get be certified each year for your firearm and uh, you know, so like a that. lot of those, a lot of those in-house trainings is kind of what we call them. We've uh, thankfully we have a firearms director instructor on, on staff. Um, so really, the only parts and pieces that we're really paying for, especially for the firearm piece, is the ammunition for the firearms. Um, Use of force again. Uh, we go within partnership, well, like we did this year with Royalton PD. We had an officer come from Heinsburg and do the uh, use of force class. We also had other instructors from uh, Department of Liquor and Control. Um, so we utilize Vermont instructors for those, which don't come with cost. You're just paying the officer for that those hours for that training. That's the in-house stuff. Anything else to get your 32 hours, especially if you're looking for some kind of specialized training, that's going to come with a bigger cost to it. But Scott, you can get eight hours of Team 2 training for free, other than the cost of the officer to be there. That is true. Mm. <laughs> Plus lunch. Win-win. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, um, it's important to have a future for our officers and to help them develop and grow. Um, you know, it's possible the chief won't be the chief forever, so maybe there's an officer that needs to take, you know, some leadership training. Maybe the department will at some point have a sergeant and the sergeant will need leadership training. All of that stuff uh, costs money. It doesn't take anything to burn through five grand. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Training, so, that's one. I don't. For, you know, some of the ones that we have to send people to, right. and right. it's you get that into it by the time you get them out the door, headed that way. So, yeah. and I just suggest would, we pad it to twenty-five thousand, or have Trevor <laughs> look at it. I mean, I don't um, know. I don't know what the stuff costs. I mean, I, I think your budget. This is um, assuming six officers. And that's not even a thousand dollars a person. Yeah. And we kind of went on the. the, the I think model. you're up closer to the fifteen thousand as a minimum, knowing that you probably got some other budget line items that you could play with if you needed to. But I would think you'd want to be. Yeah, it is. And did you say the fleet of vehicles you have now would cover this staff that you'd have? We have three vehicles. Two of them would be essentially the frontline service vehicles with a chief's vehicle. If one of them goes down, that chief's vehicle gets pressed into that regular service and or would be available if something else comes up. That's present in the district. And we have three current. That's how many vehicles we have right now. So if one of them goes down, you're 
house of cards is just falling apart. Mm -hmm. So really, how and you much can't would, go rent one. How much would it cost to budget for one more police cruiser? Funny <laughs> <laughs> you should ask. Funny you should ask. Yeah. So we did. Uh, this is coming from the brand new Tahoe. Uh, the total spent was fifty-eight thousand. That's fully equipped. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a special deal on it or something. Yeah. We did pretty good. Do they have to be Tahoes? No, there I, other options. I took what you I just had. have that one. That right? was a brand new cruiser yep. with the total outfit and radio, uh, which gave me that base number. I didn't have what the total cost was for the Durango or the, uh, the pickup due to it was purchased from Orange County. So this, these were the hard numbers that I had with a brand new cruiser. And no, it does not have to be a Tahoe. But I really, I really like those Tahoes. I really like those Tahoes. Have you, um, only because we are also working on so budget, have you looked into leasing? We, we haven't looked into that in any shape or form. This was a, of uh, the FEMA, uh, grant purchase all the way around. Um, we okay. haven't been down that road. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and 60 to 65 is what we were seeing when we went through the exercise last January, February in terms of what other communities when they were going out to look for. See, similar styles of vehicle. They all seem to be in that kind of medium to heavy duty SUV class. And that budgeting, you'd want to put 60,000 in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we have these financed other pieces of equipment that would be an option. It puts just the lease payment in there. The challenge is um, you get, once you get into it, you get locked in it. That's now your replacement cycle forever to stay on the cycle because the money you might otherwise put aside to sort of save and purchase. It, it, or you have to sort of sure. double up at some point if you ever want to jump out of the game. Some towns never do. I think Barry Town still lease finances with a significant amount of stuff. Others have moved away from it. Just, it's a I would, I mean, preference. I would think you would want to be on a cruiser rotation anyway. You don't want to buy three, mm -hmm. you know, every three years oh, well, or all at once. Um, I can look and see what the information was. Um, I think it was fifteen thousand a year, um, and that was a completely outfitted cruiser, everything, plus it's the maintenance um, on the vehicle as well, except for tires. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be a bad option. I don't. And we can do it, say, a three-year, yeah. we've done five years, anything over yeah. five years for any indebtedness. First of all, you don't have useful life for this, but yeah. anything beyond that needs voter approval anyway, so it's, yeah. you run up against statute once you hit. Yeah. Back to the um, year 24 approved, the $524,000. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something earlier about a higher number, of seven hundred and thousand dollar number. Yep. So really all of the three options really are starting from that seven hundred thousand dollar number, aren't they? Right. In terms of if you look at just sort of what we're proposing for operational need, based on what we've sort of known as operational need, both both in our trial run and when we built that earlier version, that's really your starting point when you talk existing district is that. And then from there you jump into the other models. Right. So if this was to just stay in the district, I'm not saying that this was going to happen, but if this were to just stay in the district, your proposal for next town meeting day would be 824000 and they turned down $700,000 this last year. Well, we didn't say it would get through. We said this is what well, I'm you just saying, want, you know, the level you're of you're service just, that the people are wanting. The difference is you're adding $120,000 more right. than what was proposed that, that failed. It's, yeah. Well, it's two officers and then a year's worth of inflation, basically. Well, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not doubting yeah. the numbers are correct. Matter of fact, I think they're probably very correct. It's just it's just the point of it is is that you couldn't get them to pass the budget for 700000 which it actually was close to 700000 before the Sheriff's Department started. And you know Randolph lost a police department, if you will, lack of a better term. Um, but but uh, you know, and it was up close to that seven hundred thousand. Then Bill Bonyak came in, and, 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 and they they reduced it significantly. And then you obviously went without the sheriff's department for this year. Uh, well, no no not no one's fault, but whatever. But what I'm saying is, then you proposed what it was really going to cost, which was seven hundred thousand dollars. And I had to believe there had to be some sharing in the county or something to make this even affordable for, for the Sheriff's Department to get there. Um, and they, they turned that down. 
But yeah. Joe, I think that some of that was um, people felt like it was a rush thing. And what's different, what will be different this town meeting is that we've had this committee that has been met and very thoughtfully looked at all this data and looked at all these comparable towns and models and done its homework. And I think we'll be better equipped to educate the community about the need for the budget, whatever it ends up looking like. I, 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 I well hope that you're correct. I, 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 do, I do very much hope that you're correct. But I also think in town there were several individuals that went out and about and said turn the, turn the budget down, turn the budget down because they wanted to see it go to a town-wide police department and have it paid for through the whole town. And that's, that's a lot of what I read. Whether it's accurate or not, but that's what the newspaper said and that's what the Front Porch Forum said. And uh, those folks that were out there that, that, that pushed that, that angle. I remember those comments from, from, from certain people. Absolutely. So and they convinced a lot of folks to turn it down. Yeah. But we also had a but lot of people that came out to vote in April or May, whenever it was, that wanted it too. So I think that speaks loudly. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I just want to make one comment about the vehicles. Uh, if we were going to continue on this road, I would wonder if we should incorporate either leasing or buying for so we have that's right up front where you'd need it. I could be wrong, but all three of them are brand new, right, Chief? No, the uh, Durango and truck are they were used, used from Orange County. You know, I bought a few vehicles for the town and we used to be uh, uh, Durango's uh, like a trucks. twenty and the Rams a nineteen. And and we did them on the lease, and you bought them out for a dollar at the end after three years. That's how they did it. And it really was more looking at what the rate was going to be that you were going to pay than anything else. Well, the loan was going to be 5% or 6%, but if you lease it, it really only adds up to 3% and buy it out for a dollar at, at the end of the year. That was more the, the reasoning of, of which way you went. It was more the financing side. Yeah. And, it, and it fits into other policy choices the town has made or wants to make. We've talked the last couple of budget cycles about trying to get our overall debt load down. Uh, and so someone's taking off some of these leases, lease payments, payment for equipment, borrowing for equipment, and trying to really get into what you borrow for are those larger capital expenses. So it's going to have to sort of fall in what's our general prescription for everything. Is this an exception to that? Do we look for different ways to do it? Or do we sort of say, this is the model we have to stay on Somebody scheduled whether it be, I mean, cop cars should probably be th three years, um, but depending on how far we ask of the shark, but we're going to probably have to get a little more out of the first couple. And the police department doesn't currently have any capital funds, correct? No, and this, this budget does start to transfer money over as part of this year's capital planning process. The idea is to, at a minimum, get a vehicle replacement schedule for what we're already doing. So as we continue to develop that, We'll know exactly. 5000 going to be well short of, but if you want to replace the oldest cruiser in another year or two, you can see, yeah. Chief, do you know approximately what your vehicle maintenance expensive expenses have been this year? Uh, with us going up to the town mechanic, all we've done is oil changes and inspections thus far. Okay. Um, so all we're doing is really paying for the... Um, the oil and the filters and this and other okay. thing, so we're actually saving quite a bit. Um, I just did put snow tires on the Tahoe uh, at a tune of almost 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the other two will need tires as well. $500 Tahoe winter tires? Yeah. yeah. That's wow. a good deal. That is a good deal. Uh, really good. Uh, I was expecting that. We, we got into like the contract. Look, I got to try for $1,600. So in the uh, the budget to go forward, where did you buy them? <laughs> it sounds like we need um, at least an additional vehicle, right? Because we're at we have three vehicles, three people running them all the time. One of them is a nineteen. So there ought to be a vehicle, whether we acquire it by lease or we acquire it by purchasing. That should be in just the base budget. I, I'm fine with the 19 Ram staying as the backup. You know, if all else fails and something goes down, you need it for a couple weeks, not getting rid of it. But that might bring you into a four-vehicle rotation to 
give you what you need in this scenario. Right? If this is saying if we stay with where we are today. Are you talking 1998 or 1997? 19, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> the 19 ring. But I think you're, this budget here should at least include extra money for training and acquiring one more vehicle. Whether it's a purchase or a lease or whatever, I think we can have that conversation. But. So in all respect to me, what we were trying to think about is if it was just the village only, to get around with free vehicles is doable. If one goes down, mine gets utilized, and I hot foot it all the way around, which is fine. Um, the other way, if we go to the expanded uh, district model, that's where we would put in play another vehicle, or townwide another, you know, another maybe two vehicles or so on and so on. That's kind of what we were batting back and forth. I don't agree I see with that. Though. And I see where you're um, at. Because one of them is a 2019 already. It's mm -hmm. four years old now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're it, talking it's next year's long. budget. Mm -hmm. It will be a five-year-old vehicle. It needs to be replaced. But I'm fine with keeping it so mm -hmm. it becomes your No, and I just wanted to let you know that's yep. where our line of thinking yeah. was on more of the conservation I'm just more side. concerned when it goes down, it's going down hard. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be not a two day in the shop thing. You're going to be a six months waiting for something to show up but, thing. Like that. <laughs> but that will happen no matter what model you're on, whether you're on just the just the village or the expanded village or the whole thing. You're going to have that problem anyways. Except it's going to be multiplied. If you go on bigger than the village, you need more more people yeah. on at a time, right. so you're going to need more cars yeah. anyway. Wow. I'm just worried that right now you've got one that's going to be five years old in the budget year we're talking about. That's so, so that would be a reason that you wouldn't want to expand the the police service then. No, I would want to see the if, if the model we're talking about right now is leaving it in its current limits. My concern is that you need to replace one of the vehicles in the next budget year if if you stay just the way you are. Even. And, and okay. the expansion in sense in the, in the next year's budget is written here. Does that, how many officers does that expand from what you presently have? We'll, we're going to walk our way there. Okay. That was part of why what I tried to make here was something that looked a little it bit like a staircase. Yep. Yeah, no, right. it was good. Mm -hmm. I get it. And so we're gonna, I wanted to walk you from existing yeah. to modified to townwide just so, because I we thought that fit the best together and sort of when you think of operating... Okay, but I think the question was, in the existing, right. how many are there? Well, the existing, I heard was six there was six. Yeah, six total FDEs. Yeah. Six total what's, what's, the new, what's the new budget, say, with the, you know, the 800 that's, and something thousand dollars? That's budget. six. Yeah. Huh? That's, that's six. six. You have four six. currently. You have four, you have four currently. Yeah. Four okay, in the so budget that passed. And so three vehicles is enough We have for, three in the current, don't we? Do we have three FDEs? Yeah. Three. Well, the FTE, so it's yeah. chief, two other law enforcement officers, and then road. And so the oh, okay, okay, okay. No, and this is the, what, okay. And the total town thing. So yeah, That's so what we have today. Make, yeah, so where we are today, fiscal year that we're in, that voters approved last May, is we've got chief, two law enforcement, full-time law enforcement officers in the admin dispatch. So four FTEs, and we have some capacity for up to three part-timers. We have functionally one and a half two-ish there that we use. In this existing district model here where we build up to where we started and or where we think we need to be operationally, we have the chief. Is this Rob out math there? <laughs> four, four more full-time law enforcement officers. So county chief, there's five certified law enforcement officers. Rose makes six full-time equivalents and we still have some part-time capacity, another two, three in there. As we walk it out from there, just to give you the sneak peek, each iteration adds two officers. So, so when we get to the modified, maybe we'll skip to that if you're good with that. Um, there's the chief, six law enforcement officers, the dispatcher, and some part-time so capacity. The, the question, the, the, so the part-timers, what do they add up to? Do they add up to an FDE? 
Now, we've got about, in the current budget, we've got about half a position in ours. So, so, so about, so you're at 6.5 FTEs. So, yeah. Okay. 1,040 okay. hours were budgeted, but with the way the COPS grants fall and everything, we probably won't use 1,000 hours of part-time capacity. Can, yeah. can I ask Scott a question? Scott, if, if we decided uh, you went the whole town, the police department that did the whole town, what would your operation look like? What do you mean? Well, right. Ten employees. Mm -hmm. Ten employees. 10.5 FTEs. One admin. Okay. But a chief. what would you be doing in the whole town that you, I don't know how to. Like, what, what would change in the, so, I think I see what you're saying. Like, right now you're servicing the whole town, um, basically. Um, well, but he's also answering calls outside the town. Right, and so what would you, when you no, were, when you were operating with the sheriff's department, you used to drive around town every day. Now, if you had the whole town, you probably wouldn't be doing that same coverage. Yeah, well, you know, in a perfect world, if we were to do a townwide model, I, two officers would be on shift where you could divide your time and also your efforts so you would have those officers in those in the town and in the village doing those active patrols does so, that answer your question or not really I mean, yeah. I, to me to me our operation wouldn't change that much it'd just be more employees with more areas to cover we wouldn't be changing operations we'd just be on a more grand scale Okay, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, are you going to be covering the outside perimeters mm -hmm. as extensively or as deeply as you do in the village? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that would be... Am I making sense? Yes, and I think that given the whole geography of the town, we would be out there, would it be as aggressive as a two square mile area? I would say no, but if there was other calls, uh, say like I have a speed issue on in East Randolph on Route 14, we're gonna uh, hit that a lot more heavy as opposed to um, being on Rand Road. Okay. You know, does that make sense? Yes, so, it does. That you you you're answering my question. So we're still gonna have those active patrols, but you know, for those other circumstances, we will concentrate on those areas that need those calls for service. If there's uh, break-ins at uh, BTC or up in the center where I'm going to concentrate my law enforcement efforts up in that area as well while keeping the uh, the entire town covered as much as we can as well. Okay. But as soon as we say we're going town-wide, mm -hmm. you become the primary law enforcement for the entire town, which means the calls that the state police are covering now come to you. Yep. So the only thing we're doing is shifting who's taking the calls so to we're a town department, department instead of the state police. Correct. Correct. The other, the other piece is, is outside of town, there's 100, there's 100 miles of road. Inside the town, there's 19 and a half. And so the, so the, so the difference is, is that I'm looking for the same, if I'm going to pay for it, then I'm going to look for the same coverage that you're doing in the town. I'm going to expect someone to be on South Randolph Road. At a much regular, a much you know, very regular basis, as they would be in the town. But, well, but we've yeah. been talking about more as like the public safety side, and not like the policing all the time. And so it wouldn't yeah. necessarily have to be like if you had a call, as you had a break in, or your neighbor was sexually assaulted, then Scott would be answering that call regardless of where that is. I agree. And so, that. and it's yeah. more about helping our neighbors in that sense, and making sure that everyone has that access to public safety. Then. They Making sure that the person is <laughs> driving by your house every three times a day. They, they, they presently do have that access to public safety. They very much do. If the state police does it, they've got Scott that responds to it. You've got a $100,000 budget that sits there in the general fund that says for policing services. So they have that already. We, you can't, we, you can't okay. convince me otherwise. Um, Can I that, ask a question? Um, Trini, what you just said is, I just wanted to, I think what you just said is, Essentially, we'd be shifting, if we went to this other model, we'd be shifting the calls that currently go to the state police. They would now, they would then go to Randolph police. And I just want to, Scott, does that reflect reality? Like, are you already responding to those? 
I mean, th that's really what I'm trying to get at. Like, are we are we trying to make a budget that sort of actually reflects our current reality of police response? So, like reality, we're already getting those calls, and you know, depending on what the call is, if it's not a non-emergent call, those calls do get shifted out to the state police, and the state police, whether they follow up on that said call or don't. Um, or if it's an emergent call or something that's you know within our capacity to be able to deal with, we handle it. Um, so we're already almost expanding the district lines as we are with the current staff, which sucks, but we're still we're reality is we're already doing it. Okay. Um, are we heading out to the East Randolph area on a daily basis? No. Are we doing active patrols on uh, on the uh, back end of 66, South Randolph Road, North Randolph Road, and all the above? No, uh, because we just we don't have the capacity. If we went to that townwide model, that would be we would be the primary law enforcement entity to handle those calls for service and provide that public safety uh, uh, effort. Um, so yes, we would be doing those kind of things, and all the calls would be shuttled to the Randolph PD. Got it. Okay, let's go in order and go to a conversation about the modified. So the modified is, we we're assuming essentially that this would take us up towards Grand Valley Center, Morgan Orchard, the hotel, or at least to the barn and McDonald's, and then the other direction down to the shops. So as we mentioned before, this expanded one, we add a couple of full-time law enforcement officers. So you went from four plus the chief in the last version. Now you've got six plus the chief. Hard time so maybe the, the maths are getting <laughs> six with the chief. <laughs> um, and, and then you still have rows there. And we still have some part-time capacity. In all of these versions, because we have more full-time officers, we do take that ten. 1040, the half-time position, we lower those part-time hours down as well. So you're really talking more about sort of a 0.3, 0 0.4 percent, you know, position in terms of what the part-time hours equate to as you get through these versions. Um, there aren't too many differences in between this one and the one before in terms of there aren't any new categories to add. We have the same pressure points that we had in the other one. What are we put in there for any of the embedded contracted work. What does that cost? Same line still held. Training's probably still low. Capital transfer's definitely still low. Um, we've updated workers' compensation costs, which you can see just by adding the two bodies, adding the extra payroll. We essentially just went up $9,000 from version to version just on that. Um, vehicle fuel goes up a little bit. Um, some of our other supplies go up a little bit. Dispatch stays roughly the same. It depends on the sort of shift coverage and all of that. Um, we've got a little bit extra in there in terms of where the various city contract worked out for this year anyway. It's so it's a reasonable cheap. amount to say. Dispatch isn't charging you by the number of calls? Uh, no, they're okay. charging us uh, pretty much a set rate as of right now. I, I think if we if we expand to a like a modified district or a townwide model where we're pulling more of their resources, I believe that they may try to modify as best as they can. And how many vehicles, Trevor, with this one? This one, what do we jump up to? We had originally thought this is where we need to add at least one. Okay. So we're starting with at least four of the vehicles, and then we could talk about whether or not five makes sense in that, in that model or not. But. And again, so then that adds, if you add another vehicle, it's another $60,000. That's two, right? Because we got to replace one, right. no matter what, and you need to add one. Mm -hmm. So this budget needs two vehicles added to it. And one of the things we need to add in here too, if we go to this, is that for each officer, we bought some additional stuff with the ARPA funds when we set up, anticipating that at some point we would be able to add more capacity. But when we get into the modified district, we get beyond sort of the number of pistols, vests, some of these other things that we required more of to begin with. So each time we have to outfit an officer, we're going to have to add another three, was it 3,200 or so, 3,300? Ooh, that's low. <laughs> to that. I just figured it up for hours, and I came up with 43. And um, 
so that that would have to be incorporated into this version once we sort of yeah. settled in. So it's roughly the same, just in terms of the health insurance mix. Like I said before, we tried to mix it up so we don't have too much of any one thing. We don't take the most expensive or the least expensive. Um, we've got a couple people on family plans now, one on a buyout, so we added a family, uh, a two-person and a single as we start to build out each one so you get a, a wide mix. There, so that's what's incorporated. Retirement scales up based on the percentage of payroll, all of those types of things. And so what you get to there is now we've crested over that million dollar mark just by a little bit. So can we just go over operationally now, and then I want to talk boundaries because I think we need to give yeah, them do. that air. Like, what is this modified area version look like? But how many officers would be on duty at one time? under this scenario? For the expanded uh, district, I, I would put like an officer, like a night shift, or a day shift, a night shift, and a split shift officer. So you'd have, in essence, almost two on shift, as opposed, so one would be covering the mids uh, into the nights on the heaviest, most call volume times, where you still have a day officer, and you still have a night officer, and then you have a floater in between. So, so really, it's 24 hour coverage? No, no, no. I, no. You still go to about 2 a.m., between 1 and 2 a.m. So, starting at 8 a.m. is when you start? So, seven, eight, we would start at 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Yeah. And it's two officers on all that time, and you're on. So, like, I would even be considered that day shift officer with that other officer coming in, like. 11 noon or whenever to bridge that gap and what do you have what is your coverage now oh uh, me or two i know <laughs> and that's a 7 a.m to two uh Different so seven no uh so i've got sparsely every other weekend uh from like 11 to or from 6 a.m to uh 11 p.m uh every other weekend um, and he does a few of the weekday shifts to even out his 40. And then I am on Monday through Friday, uh, 0 8 to whenever I get done. So, what's he saying? You start at 6? Yeah. Wait, so does that mean every other weekend there's nobody on? Correct. As of right now. Uh, when Chelsea gets out of the academy, you'll have that. You'll have every weekend covered, but as of right now, okay. you do not. And just, Trevor, just while I'm unmuted, these, this stuff that you handed out tonight, is this available for you to send by email to yeah. me? Yeah, I can get that to you here. I, I'll Great. poke out and send that to you here in a sec. Well, you don't have to do it right now. Okay. Um, I just, it's a lot easier to see it than to hear about it. Yeah. You'll have only, I'm still trying to just, because it plays into vehicle counts and whatnot in my head. Um, you, you'll you have two people on in the day shift, and then you said there was one person that would be a split shift. So is there so, three on at some so, point? So I apologize. So like you'd have one day shift officer. Yep. One night shift officer. Yep. And then you'd have an officer that would come in for like a split shift. So you, okay. so that one officer is you. You would, in essence, you would have two officers on, you know, the second half of the day shift and uh, first half of that night shift. So yes, Plus you two. would. You, so in essence, you would have, you wouldn't have three on at the same time. You'd have two, given that split shift officer, working. And one towards the end. Correct. Right, because you're going to be there. You'll be there for part of that time also. Correct. So you need, at peak, you need three operational vehicles. Correct. In that scenario. Correct. So you really need four. Because Officer A, that's supposed to get done at X time, is in the middle of a call. Officer B can't come and take their vehicle from them. <laughs> 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 <Right. laughs> so you need four functioning vehicles in that scenario. 
So, so this budget already covers. <laughs> so this budget already has oh, a fourth being bought. Tag out. Right. <laughs> no, the car, the car pieces right now we're highlighting the numbers and then. Okay, gotcha. So you've got a sense of cost. Like two vehicles. So Only yeah. because you want the replacement, right? Yeah. I think you got it. Yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong, but yeah. 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 But really, we need four functioning vehicles, mm -hmm. and we're yep. kind of just not counting the the pickup as a functioning vehicle at this point. We're counting um, it as a replacement. So you yeah. need two a replacement and an addition. Right. I I have something has come to my mind about police coverage, and or. or Safety coverage. What happens if two o'clock in the morning a freight train's going through here and it derails the middle of town? Who gets called and who? What happens? Me. <laughs> so, without a doubt in my mind, I'm going to get that phone call and I'm going to pull the closest officers to respond to that scene in the most timely fashion. And probably the firefighters. Okay, who right? else would you have to call? So, like, say, uh, Chelsea, who lives here in town, she'd be my first phone call. Um, and then I would work out from there. I'm sure the state police would make it for that one. But again, the but state the state police, police will be there. yes. The railroad will be there. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, without there. a doubt. You can't make it. Yes. I'll be there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. that I'm so, yeah. yeah. I know that. It'll be, there'll be a party there. So, you're fully prepared, Scott. I've been ever since February. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. But unfortunately, it was in Whitehall, New York, just before they got across the border. So, we love those. I, I'm Thanks a train boss, so I, that's how I know it. Oh. You work for the state. Let's talk. <laughs> I can it's the real truth. You do. <laughs> you should. I do all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, any questions on the modified before we move to what the boundaries of the modified should be? All right, let's take the boundaries in two pieces. Okay, so we have um, to the south, right? It ends currently at Gifford. But a lot of your calls go down to Shaw's. Um, so I think the question is, where do you stop on that piece? Well, that's going to be a question for you, too. I mean, a lot of our calls for service is also on Beanville Road. I mean, technically, we drive all the way out South 12, take Beanville Road, and come back into the village. It makes sense to me to go all the way down to that town line. Would also include castings as well. On the no. Beanville Road, though, what is your mm -hmm. uh, other than yeah, the other drive? Right there. So, Men's Drive is not the, not the district. Right, right. But I'm, I'm right. just phrasing my question. Sure. Like on Beanville Road, other than Manager's Drive, because we know mm -hmm. what fun that is, What are there calls down through there or are they just patrolling? Um, uh, more active patrols, but you also have the Beanville Apartments, uh, you also have castings, and um, and then you also have the uh, town dump and things that would encompass a lot more of our patrol areas and for calls for service. There's also storage units too that have been getting hit lately with theft, so... No, they haven't. No? Not these ones here, but other ones. Yeah, I was going to say, he's... There was one in South Worthington, wasn't there, that got hit? Uh, there, we've had some homeless people trying to encamp in the ones on uh, on uh, 12 South going out. So other than that, not the ones on Beanville. And that would also encompass the cemetery too, yep. which I think is important. Not that there's a lot going on. I was going to say, what's the story there? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Going the other way, yeah. wouldn't you um, let's get want the to go one up first. to where the, um, to many get up in that, that far up? Probably, but can we set this one first? Yeah. Like, let's decide what we're going to do on the south first. I'm sorry. Are we ending it at Shaw's? Are we going down just Route 12? Oh. Are we going to take on the Beanville Road too? 
me personally, I think they should. if we're going to be driving out that way, which we already do, make it ours. Yeah. So you're doing that even currently, in effect. And we try to pass off as much as we can to the Mount State Police. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we it? don't want that in there. <laughs> Basic sense of what we're looking at for the That district. means manager's drives becomes all you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we may need another officer and another vehicle. Well, <laughs> yeah. And some better tools. I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I need cattle prods for police. <laughs> so here. Camera's ready. <laughs> so with Shaw's, you're just really grabbing probably the two. These are the other two. So the, that whole plaza is split into these three parcels. So this is the substation up front, and then the building kind of behind it, and then the plaza. So that one just grabs these. And then if you do this sort of other version, are you talking about coming down to essentially the end of Beanville and 12, and then... But actually the town line is south of Beanville Road. Right, right down right. the line. It is, yeah. yeah. Just a little... Yeah, like town right? town's right? Town's 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. But. So what did you what did you budget to on this budget? Did you budget to Beanville or did you budget to Jaws? We budgeted a level of service, but not a the area being a little you, bit bigger, so they would need a couple bigger, you more. Need, you, but need, you need more. If it's less, yeah. then you need less. It essentially loops from Shaw's up around to, to the new hotel at Morgan Orchard site was sort of what we had thought. So depending on how you wiggle it. The red is the railroad tracks, correct? Yep. Yeah, so this green, it's not a perfect map. Obviously, the yep. landfill isn't mysteriously in the police district already. Um, it's just shading, but it gives you a sense of with some parcel lines and some other features on there. So I think you're... You're issue here is if you're going to go to the town line you naturally could say that way to the railroad track but then what do you do this way and yeah do you want me to grab this side of 12 too right down 12 and there's you know properties along 12 they're now part of the district okay. I think your bigger question is how far back right I think we're saying the know? same thing right so does are that include doing, like Spooner Road and right. yes. are you doing just the roadfront property right. or are you going a little further back right. I would think you would just do the roadfront properties was it, was it a term of this property how far up say they are working up What's up here on uh, yeah. crab apple? There's a bunch Some of houses. houses there. Like five or six, houses. right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. It's a little cold, isn't it? I don't know. This is where the fun begins, huh? Those properties have to be identified because obviously um, there's a voting piece of it too. It's going to come at some point in time if it decides to expand. If they decide to expand the district, someone's going to have to be able to vote on whether they want that or not. They are, and expanding the district to the higher volume areas makes is what it looks like we're just trying to do, and not the other parcels outside of that, but just going up the the one for going to Shaw's up to Beanville and then going up. Well, if you're going within the district, though, you've got, like, here, like, these all are touching 12, so if you're mm -hmm. calling it by what touches Route 12 is suddenly in, mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. you've, you're bringing in some pretty large parcels that have, like, are just land or... Not saying that we don't know how to cause problems on open land in this town. <laughs> 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 just, uh, I'm sorry to off, interrupt. Yes. Um, and I, I love getting to see this map, but I'm zooming in from Bennington down here because I'm doing a working down here all day tomorrow, and I have a, actually a night. I have a dinner meeting with my team, so 
I have to jump on. Um, but Trevor, if you could send me whatever it is you handed out, that'd be awesome. And um, I'll see you guys next week. All right, Kristen. Thank thanks for joining us. So the minutes should reflect that I'm leaving at 7.25. Always. <laughs> Thank you. Trevor, can we take like a three-minute break? Good with me, whatever you guys want. Because I think we're going to be here for a while discussing this. <laughs> If you put in state property and it becomes part of the place district, does your pilot change? So if okay, and um, does the do you get anything from New England Central for for taxes for the railroad? Portion that goes through the town, or does that only go to the state? I don't think we get anything directly, yeah. They have us lease the crossings or whatever that arrangement is. Yeah. That's an outgo. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess if your pilot goes up, if you're going to go to Randolph Center, you ought to include BTC. You're BTC. going to, you would want to include BTC so your pilot so, payment goes up. I would state. think so. It would seem to make okay. sense. To if me. you look at where you're called in, we probably shouldn't be talking about this if we're taking a break, but if if you look at your call generators, though, wouldn't you, shouldn't, in what's up there, you really ought to go further back, right? Because you got the camping place, camping. and you got the Seminary. state lab. The cemetery has events and whatnot at it. You've got the house down below. Well, and that's going to be, you know, the park piece where you want to draw your line. I mean, we I know. I was just thinking, where's you, your generators? And like, before you know it, your expanded line is going to be town wide. Yeah. Yeah, but you there's know, not. Do you, do you just draw a big circle and say everything that's encompassed in the circle is going to be what's your expanded boundaries? So if you draw. You know, uh, say we're going to go out 12 to Beadville, uh, 66 up to PTC, uh, 12 north to the town line, um, examples. Mm -hmm. And then you draw a circle right around, you know, in the Randolph area. This is what the expanded district is. I don't know. Yeah. You know I'm just that. trying to, like, how do you, if you look at, you know, where you're going, like, what does that then do? What is what is your other generators? What are you? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a phase. I don't know. Right. And when I, you're looking I don't at this, think you can go whole hog all at once. Right. I think, yeah. No, and you're only talking 200,000 between expanded and town. Why? Yeah, and then you split up between the grand list differently. Like, you're going to. And I, I personally think that we should have bumped down. You're that. not just that, right? Your right. vehicles aren't in there. Your Capital costs aren't in there. At what point are you now? But um, if I can finish space. my thought. Yeah. Um, I don't think that we need the patrols as high as, as this is suggesting. I don't think that we need to be doing massive amounts of patrol all throughout. It's well, about, I think you do. I think it's about responding to the calls. It's just and just sharing that cost overall. It's just like if I move to the, the district, my daughter wouldn't be able to get bus to school, but she can get bus to school for East Randolph, and we all pay the same amount of school taxes. To me, just sharing the cost overall, but I don't think that we need to have like literally driving every single mile of the road every single day. I think you got to have the patrols. I don't think they have to be I extensive, and we're not even doing patrols where we're like driving by everybody's house here in town right now either. They're not literally doing loops on Hospital Hill in front of everyone's house every day either. And I don't think any, I don't think anybody wants that either. I don't think anyone wants to be patrolled and watched all the time. So what kind of public safety does that present? And how do you prevent crime? Right? Okay, so, so we don't include patrols or the police department, say, drives out South Randolph Road. My, my house is a bit, a, a little bit off the road. Who would know if the U-Haul truck's in my driveway stealing my house blind or not? Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a piece I look at. But also look at it and say, 
maybe we don't have that kind of thing that they have within the village, and yet I'm going to be taxed just the same as it would be if I owned a property in the village. And your tax if you have kids or not. I mean, you that's, your tax if you have kids or not, if they're going to the school or not. You I've never had a kid in a, in a school exactly. in Vermont, and you, but I still and pay you, it. Exactly, and that's that, my point. Not that, I, not that I agree with it. Uh, however, that's, that's kind but of a model, but in the policing piece of it, I'm not seeing anything that's going to deter crime on South Randolph Road. If you're not going to be out there patrolling the road, you're just going to be responding, then I'm just going to be a statistic. I'm going to pay $400, $800 a year to be a statistic. That's, that's basically what's going to happen. I've got the state police right now to make me a statistic, so I need another entity to make me a statistic and pay for that. I'm not thinking that that's a, that's a wise decision. At least financially, it's not a wise decision. That's why Vermont's broke as it is. Highest tax, fourth highest tax tax place in the country. That's why. I think you're going to have to come up with something other than... To say that we're never going to do patrols and we're just going to respond because... I'm not saying never do patrols. So if you could actually listen to what I say instead of just responding with your own prejudices, that'd be amazing. Um, what I'm saying is that we don't need to cover every single mile every single day, but we could have the staff on hand to be able to respond to the calls that we're already getting, and we all should have, we all have a responsibility to make sure that we are all taken care of. Just like we take care of educating our children so our children can then be responsible adults and be able to move up in the world. We all have that responsibility to take care of each other, and that's what we're doing. I mean, you pay for rec too, and you don't have kids in rec. You pay for the li I, I never go to the library, and I pay for the library. Kids, so. Well, this is kind of primary right now. Situations, <coughs> situations like domestic abuse, those calls ever come from out in the hinterlands? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure do. Now that I have listened to you, sorry, I don't like your comment very well, but now that, now that I have listened to you, I still disagree with you. I think that if you're going to provide policing in the village, and you're going to ask the people outside the village to pay for policing, then they should get the same policing, same policing amount. But that's what I they're. But what they're doing right now in the village is they're not driving. If you'll listen to me for a moment, that'd be great too. Thank you. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm done now. Okay. So you were done. Um, but what I'm saying is that we're not driving by every single person's house every single day, while looking in their windows and seeing what's going on. We're responding to calls. And I think as a society, we have that responsibility to take care of each other, just like we do with other things. Yes, Scott. Sorry. So there's a dichotomy between both your points. The reason why I signed up for the Randolph area was to be more of a proactive as opposed to reactive. There's a dichotomy between both, and that's what we're trying to strive for. Are we trying to drive up and down everybody's roadway once, twice a shift? No, but we will be out to ensure or try to deter as much as we possibly can. Am I going to stop everything? I can't make that promise in any shape or form. But if we can be proactive enough to even put a car out in any of the far reaches, that's going to also deter some of this crime. There's an economy to both your statements. And, and that's what we've got to strive for. The yeah. state troopers are out there now. They're out on the back roads. They're, the they're out on the, Yeah, but they're, you know, they're driving these roads. And when they get a hot spot, they're out there. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody. Well, I've been I driving have. the back roads a ton. I've not seen anybody. I, I haven't have. seen my cars go by my house in years. But. Um, Chopping in the fields where you're right in the fields all day long, chopping. They go by. Yep. We do. And we meet them with the trucks on the dirt roads and stuff. They're out there. And they, may not, they may not be crossing their path right then, but when you need them and you call them, they're. Again, when you have an accident, they're. We're not making any final decisions tonight, anyways. No. No. Well, no, but we need to give Trevor some. Landmarks to work with on this the district idea. So we really need to come back to the map and figure out to the south where where what properties we think ought to be in the police district, and then we'll go the other way and and see what that looks like. 
So we can use the same system to try to come up with a modified district grand list, which will, when we get into tax conversations, that's where that sort of can't sell for X until I know what that piece is. And so the modified district, the people would have to vote to be a part of it, correct? If we did townwide, they would be voting on a budget yeah. in general, right? Yeah, I'd have to go back and look. We got some guidance as part from the town attorney as part of that process before okay. the first or second vote last year. So we've got to revisit that and make sure we understand what the modified district process is. So I was just wondering if that was part of the converse of the thought process here of who would want to be voted into it. Are you, let me ask you a question. Are you afraid? to allow a vote separately outside the district so that they can vote separately on what they want? I think you got it. No, I versus one town-wide to... vote and everybody gets a vote, because let's face it, there's a certain amount of people going to see a tax reduction of it, right? So those those folks that are actually in the district will see their taxes reduced because it's going to be made up in, in great part by those outside, outside the district. Those are the tax implications that I asked about. So my question, my question is, and what I'd like to see, what I'd like to see happen, I'm sure you don't disagree with that too. However, what I'd like to like to see, what I'd like to see with that is that the people outside the district get to vote separately of whether they want a district expansion. And, we, and the select board can make that determination. The select board themselves can say, "Yep, we're going to vote it this way." That's true. They can. And I, th I think it's only fair if you're going to encumber people with taxes, despite the social thoughts, if we're going to encumber people with taxes, then they should be allowed to vote on whether that's what they want to do. And if outside the district wants to have police coverage in a different manner than they presently have now, then they will vote for it. If they don't, then they won't. Well, that's true, but the one thing I keep coming back to, too, is that we're still all the town of Randolph, even though we're in the district or out of the district, and we are, are, we're changing, we're growing, and to me, we need the coverage going up to the barn and to BTC and the Morgan Orchard, and then going out, where we just talked about, to Shaw's and Greenville. To me, that makes sense, and I would like us to all come together as a village, even though you live outside or, excuse me, inside. It's, it's trying to present something that would work for everybody and everybody gets to vote on that across the board. That's... So you're not for well, having people vote separately? I'm not. No, nope, I'm not. Because myself, I've, I've lived in the village all my life and I've always paid the taxes, but I like the coverage when I'm... I'm that's me personally talking about for the town. I just I like it when I see someone go up my hill and down. And I just like it. But I'm just saying giving people a, a chance to to look at all three of these things and lining them up to say this is this, this is this, and this is this. And I think people are, are pretty tuned in, a lot of people, as to what that is and how our world has changed and why we need it. That vote would reflect that then. Well, I'm saying this no, but those yeah. outside the district, if they felt they needed, they felt we're they doing the whole reason how the vote would reflect that. Mm -hmm. And I don't if know they, when the effect of that that will affect the tax rate to what? The so well, then you don't have any idea. No, I don't. The no, because you grand list doubles. No, I'm just trying to think like the tax rate's going to drop dramatically, and the increase in the police isn't going to make as much difference. Am I right? What we got to figure out is. Yeah. Just to paint the side 12 and yeah. have it there so what you're accessing is only what you would access if you went down route 12 or are you wanting... So what would happen if someone would like up... Um, so if we were... Um, so I have a question over here if anybody's interested in listening. Um, so if we did just the properties that are facing route 12 for example and there's a house right behind that and they make a phone call because someone's breaking in or something. So that would, they would have to wait for state police, basically. Like that would go to state police and not to, to our town. But the yeah. their but their neighbor right in front of them would have Scott or one of his people there. I don't think yeah. you're going to squabble over if it's in back. Of well, not technically, but that's technically. how it would go. So those people right. would still get the same amount of coverage, basically, but not the which is what they do now. Right. 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 But I, yeah. I mean, that happens anywhere the line is yeah. drawn anyway. Yeah. Even if you live like right on the Randolph right. Bethel town line or, or wherever. But, you have a there's always a line. Down at Jeff Townsend's farm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. There's so always a line. Scott's going to go to it, and that's right. Bethel. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what if so. just for this exercise, let's what if we include just the properties that are on the other side of twelve? So properties all so like the golf course, for example, would that then that's the other side. Oh sorry, yeah, we're on this side. Right, 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 right. We're having a hard time. I'm geographically challenged. So here we are, we're headed headed toward Bethel from Shaw's. Yeah. Yep. So everybody agrees that at the minimum we're getting this. Yeah. Right. So now we're heading down Route 12. Yep. And on we... the right hand side, the boundary is the railroad tracks. And then so we're going to grab, say, from where this green line roughly is right now, mm -hmm. to the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. We're going to sweep around to this point or yep. to this point. To the point. town line. I just go down to the line. And then as I come back up here, I'm grabbing both sides, mm -hmm. anything with frontage. On 12. On 12. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Done. We'll start there. Yes, are we going down right. Beanville then? Sorry. Yeah, we are. So, so it'd be like a, so like where yeah. castings is and then the other manufacturing there, those would all be included, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. So, so someone on, if you go all the way to the line, so someone on Spooner Road, for example, they don't get, they're not included? Uh, correct. They'd and still be VSP. They'd still be state police. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Well, at least gives me something to mm -hmm. shoot at. Yeah. Okay. Now head okay. the other way. Existing boundary. Now we're headed up. So this gets into the do we want to go up both sides of 66 to stay consistent with what you just did on the mm -hmm. south side? And does that include I'm grabbing, you'll see right here these first two? Mm -hmm. Peel back and away. Of course, and then this plot right here, when I click on it, you'll see it's connected to all of this up here. It's mm -hmm. mostly land. But to mm -hmm. grab it, grab that. <laughs> and and then the, the, the value reflects that it's largely undeveloped uh, land when you get down into a real value. Although That's what we would use for that grand list value. So technically the golf course's address is a, a current uh, district. Route sixty six ends right. right in through here, is it? It's this green it's the green area right here. That's right. Okay. There. okay. All right. <laughs> When we were talking with um, the listers, they said there are some parcels currently and only a portion of their land is in the district. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they get two separate bills yeah. for that. And I know they don't like it because they have to do the manual calculation, but in a case like Montague and some of these others, boy, if you're if you're narrowing it in, just because you have one little tiny parcel at the bottom that touches 66, now all of a sudden everything else they comes do, into it. They do line up against the current police district though too. This one may have gone. There's a subdivision that's been talked about for this piece too, so yeah. it could be that this is updated at least every April. So some of these we'll just have to make sure we also have. We'll know whether or not they're still the same. Or I mean, guess that's my question with Montague, so, is they have their line right up against it anyways. Right, and the, that's not Montague, that's the next one out. See all oh, the, okay. how funky the shape is of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just because I got that little piece down on 66 now, all of a sudden oh, everything yeah. up there. The current yeah. village. So as soon as you get a phone call, yep, I, are we going to send this funky yeah, shape right. map to state police? <laughs> so if I'm paying yeah. and I'm on this one and I have a They're call way up here, well, yeah. I'll expect Scott to be responding way up here. Right. Right? Because I'm if you're gonna tax all this Yeah, I guess Montague is just basically I mean they line right up against it, so it, it makes a little sense to me. I guess, I don't know, maybe it doesn't, but well, part of them are already covered anyway. Right, exactly. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah Montague is basically covered, kind of yeah, almost covered. That's on the other side of town, yeah. So I would yeah. But the other parcel I see what you're saying, because that is 
Now the high school and the and middle school, school of of elementary yeah. is within the current right. district. But if I'm that right, person, the hand is right here. Be like, all right, I'm all the way up here, and they say right it's yeah. state police okay. coverage, and they're not, you know. Yeah, right there. Or the state parcel. police says, no, I'm sorry, you're in. Chief, do you have a suggestion or an idea or a thought? Or had you considered it at all? <laughs> well, again, you know, how far do you want to, you know, paint your stroke here? I mean, if you're going to say you're going to go up 66, you know, all the way to say, uh, to encompass BTC and or say, you know what, we're going to stop at the interstate bridges. Cut, divide. I get the other ends of it with saying uh, the new hotel, BTC, Morgan Orchard, all the above, which they're screaming for services. Mm -hmm. I get it, uh, you know, but are you just going to do that quarter or are you going to do an, a compass all the way around? And, you know, is that going to encompass Fish Hill? Is that going to encompass Hebert Hill? Is that going to go all the way down to the uh, 12 North that you're going to go have to go out all the way uh, past Peth Road to be able to encompass Howard Hill, Hebert Hill, and all the above? I mean, where do you guys want to go? I mean, why I was trying to say, like, you know, if you had your boundaries, say, if you were going to encompass uh, VTC Morgan Orchards on that end, say, that corner of Beanville and 12, what's your other boundary out 12 north, and you just draw a circle and say, congratulations, that's going to be your expanded district. I, I don't know. Right. You know, I don't know. And what about the different, like, Villages that we have, like we've Randolph Center, we East Randolph, we South Randolph. Like, how what, are there actual boundaries for that, or do we just put the signs up and say you're in Randolph Center? But, but that's just like to be part of it. You just move the sign in the middle of the night. <laughs> 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 well, that's, but like, but I'm just saying, like, if we just like decided to encompass Randolph Center. Well, they had there were know, well, there were boundaries way back when they first developed. And right? one thing so, I had mentioned were the fire department districts. Yeah, and to see what the boundaries of those are, because but those are boundaries. Even yes, worse. but by but doing this, you're also in now in approaching right. on it what the village. We encompass everything in the village except when they go into Braintree. Yes, yeah, they all cover each other. Randolph yeah. Center covers part way down 66, and and not all the above. So we're also doing both fire stations and neglecting period East Randolph. Yeah, you know. Where's the middle line here? You know, we're used to it. We just get a bill for it. <laughs> well, that's the thing over in East Randolph. Is everyone's always like, "What about us? Why don't we get things?" Well, and, and, now, and, now, and now, and now, and now, are like, "Congratulations, <laughs> you're included." Well, but that's not what they want to be included on. There's no playgrounds. Yes, Nicole's. at least one. Can as you here and sidewalks? Can you include? businesses without including an area. So could we, can you say the police department covers the current village district just the way it is right now, plus McDonald's, the barn, Morgan Orchards, and VTC. There, we didn't change the lines at all, it just now includes those. I don't even know if that's a possibility. I, so there's, so that's, that's, a, that's a great piece, but you're also traveling between here and there, mm -hmm. and you've got a cruiser going up and down 66, yep. you've got motor vehicle enforcement, you've got, hey, what about me, mm -hmm. you've got the churches, you've mm -hmm. got other residences there that also are demanding calls for service. That's a hard to one answer to answer your yeah. question, yes, you technically can. You could can. do it. You right. can't okay. spot zone. Right, so for right. zoning purposes, there's statute that doesn't allow you to do that, but right. this you could. That would um, be almost like a business hiring a private security company. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is, Which is the that they, they don't get to vote on it. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, what, you know, you know, unless they live at the business, they don't get to vote on it. Yeah, because right. yeah, my know? business is in the village, but I don't get a vote. I don't pay right. taxes on it. Right, yeah. I mean, you could, yeah, there's nothing... The operating <laughs> challenge of if you're on your way to and from. Oh, absolutely. I just wondered if yeah, whether you're doing business or possible. you could use zoning district boundaries just to, to take, but those could change over time. And so when we were doing all the meetings and people were getting all.
excited that we had people show up to talk about this stuff with us, which we're not having, but they're going to gripe about it. Um, the conversation was more about hitting just those places that you would get to basically on going up 66 and getting up through to the inter at that point most of it was the intersection it didn't include BTC and whatever but you know the, the conversation most of what we heard was that it ought to at least go up 66. We're going to a child care center point, up there soon too. Mm -hmm. Which is right along that same yep, swath yeah. but like it was more of a you're up there quite a bit already you're providing that level of service but they're not part of the district and there's a lot of those businesses there that people are getting off the interstate to go to, too. So all that traffic stuff that you're getting from the interstate that's going to be problems is benefiting those businesses that are up there, too. Yeah. Um, when is the hotel supposed to open? Next year. Next year. You get to yeah. fall of 2024, yeah. September, yeah. August, September, something like that. So about a year away. About a year away. Yeah. Yeah. There's always stuff going on at that parking ride. Well, I think it's, it's, like, well, it's, right it's more like, oh, no, it's more like I see all those accidents up there all the time, I guess. Is, I, so I just, in my head, I just watch it. Right, that's, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. But there's like a lot of, just a lot of cars, there's a lot more chance of crashes. Maybe just for now to move us forward, do you want me to do a modified district goes up to the interstate bridges? I'll just sure. grab everything on both sides. I think you got to go to the other side of them. That borders I do too. I, I think you got to go up to the intersection in front at the BTC. top in front of BTC. Okay, so go first. And include BTC? I think you would. Would you? What about Floyd's? No, I think so, you got to stop somewhere, so you got to kind of get But, you know, and we're going to get into that kind of busy match, too. I mean, do we just go to the intersection and not do BTC, and not do Morgan Orchards, not do Medi? Morgan Orchards or, touches it. But so you would. No, so does BTC touch it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, well, if it comes down to 66, they have a drive on 66 when he does. There. Yep. So, for Great example, old garage. Yep. Yeah. going I would do, up 66, I think you see it like a car up. As opposed to what Scott was talking about in, in encompassing, yep. which way is it going to be like the car so, up? So they did VTC with the pilot. That's the way everybody's talking about it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where we are right now. It's a corridor. Yeah. Where the, That's what we were just talking about. So as opposed right, to a no, second. Something. Yeah. Okay. If your assessment goes up. <clears throat> Although I thought a pilot was based on property values and. It is, and it's only a certain yeah, percentage. Like a, yeah, but there's a formula, right? Taxes. It has to do with, yeah. I don't know, we'd have to look at that. Yeah. Does pilot go up if, so pilot is payment in lieu of taxes. Say, it's really a state, the state doesn't pay property taxes, but they pay, I don't know, it's not full. They pay something, something. to the town that they have property in. And so the question is if you added them to the police district so you were adding the expense of covering their area does the pilot payment go up and so and if we're not going to get anything else out of, of it Randolph Center actually gets a piece of that pilot money in that fire district yeah. but it's a uh, does that change if they become part of the police district and you're providing more services I, mean, I guess if it doesn't then I'm just kidding. <laughs> Give us the money. You know, we never heard from any of them. Nope. We only heard from folks that were in the village. Um, well, we're not, we're not yeah. through yet, though, right. but we always said that we had to get going on this part. As you can see, it's taken enough time for us. We're not even through the modified conversation yet, so it's not that we're not going to do it. We just the print. We've already put 20 pounds in a 5 pound bag. I think we can get another 5 pounds in. It's going to take a little bit of doing is all. So for tonight, I would say then stop it at the stop sign at the intersection of the East Bethel Road and Ridge Road. Is it right here? Yeah. At the East Bethel Road and Ridge Road. Oh, yep. Sorry. So you're going uh, along the whole ridge. No. Ridge Road. No, 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 no stop no. it right. there in yeah. front of BTC. At that funky at corner. The, at the three-way intersection there. So I may have a kid who needs to go to the hospital or something. I can uh -oh. broken, but it's fine. It's really good. But, um, yeah. oh, good thank you. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At least give me.
some to start with. As long as it covers Morgan Orchard and Menning. Yeah, and we've got the new hospital property. But some of this, we think of the grand list value, it's going to show the lot as it is, not as what it will be with any of these. Yeah. So, so and then with many, we'll have to overlay um, the tax agreement that we have just to see if what they pay might be capped. So, so the question I have is that are all three scenarios going to be placed in front of the select board? They're going to be presented to the select board along with a recommendation from this committee. If we can get to that point. Well, if not, it'll be just the... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're simply going to recommend something. Is that right? Well, not simply, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. but I mean, we're not, in fact, acting, you know, we're not going <coughs> to something through. We're just recommending. Right. Yeah. The, the select board is the only one that has the authority to right. do that. Right. No, I, um, I understood that. But I think we're going to have to outline kind of where the challenges are and mm -hmm. what we're doing. Weren't we going to look at it all like going out towards Braintree or anything at oh, all? Oh, did you want to? Sorry. I, I don't know. How far out do you go now? Uh, out towards like 12 North. Is that what you're talking? Yeah, so we only go to um, just right before Calgary Trailer Park for the right. district. Okay. Uh, but, you know, in all honesty, we go out far as Windover Road. That's what I was wondering. And, and make a loop right around. Right. right. Which seems kind of like a natural border. Yep. Do we grab Windover around? Uh-huh. Okay. And then you're saying when you go out Park Street, you go up over Wallace Hill and down. Yep. And around. Well, uh, that 12A goes all the way to the Braintree Town Line. Okay. If you do cover all the, to the Braintree Town Line. On 12A. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I thought I saw you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I often turn yeah, around right at the We're not skipping that. Right. Good. Yeah. I, and I would leave it just as is on 12A. Okay. That makes sense. That goes all, that includes everything through there. How does Brain Tree get covered in police? State police. Same as Brookfield. Brookfield. Brookfield has a small contract with Orange County just to do some like speed patrols and things like that. But not Bethel much. has a constable, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a modified system mm -hmm. with two. They're constables, but they're full time level two, at least officers. Uh, there's sheriffs. two. They're uh, yeah, level two. Uh, one of them is a officer with Royal TPD. Okay, the other one's like a relative. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have like approximately what, like an eighty thousand or ninety thousand dollar budget in Bethel for their constable. Yeah, but as I understand from a level of service you get what you pay for in terms of if you don't pay for much, you get it's animal control and a few other some occasional speed patrol. Yeah, but it was described to us as in part. I mean there are other things. I, I called them one day just because I, you know, I I have a property in Bethel and then I I was over, heading over hunting and I just saw this poor dog. go by there and that thing would be out there laying in the rain just saying so finally I get kind of tired, tired of seeing it. There was never a vehicle there. So I, you know, this, this old, old house, the old school house, um, you know, where the Oxbow Road is up that way. So I called the constable one day. I said, hey, did they do anything about it? You know, I just felt bad for this dog that hunting season after hunting season I'm traveling over that way. And, like, you know. Some people shouldn't so, have animals. So, so I think you had talked about with the modified district that's adding two officers? Yeah. With the new boundaries that we made, one is, is the that shore. Is that realistic with these boundaries that we just picked? But that's, that's two on top of. Right. No, I okay, understand so that's that. Four right. Total. Yeah. Right. So. I'm just thinking, depending on how we modified the district, right. <laughs> one might be enough, might need four, you know, depending yeah. what you would pick. So. And that was the question I was asking about how are you going to cover East Randolph, North Randolph, South Randolph, and Randolph Center and all the roads that are in between and the mileage of roads in between. And how are you going to provide at least some sense of equal protection or equal road coverage of, of traveling those roads? 
for town wide. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. town wide. That's why I asked that question because you know that's been a lot of those questions have been asked of me. Mm -hmm. I said, so who's going to ride by my house and what kind of protection am I getting? And what do I, again, you know, as, as I kind of reiterate, people but if say, we, so if we move to the town wide one, we've kind of hit the boundaries now, right? You yeah. got what you yeah, need there. Yep. So if we go to the town wide proposed budget, that's now up to the chief and eight officers plus the admin. Yeah, rules are ten and a half FTEs. So yeah, chief eight plus rows and then whatever part time capacity. And, and then, then how many vehicles? How many well, officers? I'm wondering what the out, what Six. that coverage then looks eight. like. On a, are you? You're clearly more than two, on right? Uh, I would have two per shift. So instead of doing that modified where I'd have one on day, one on night, one in split, I would do two officers per day, two officers per night. So and would, four just doing. <laughs> well, I mean, I get you would, I mean, uh, again, you've got days off, you got all those other parts and pieces you got to play into. Um, you know, if we can, depending on how schedule flows or whatever, if you had a, another split shift, that would also be beneficial. But you know, really, you would have two officers on each shift. Are we at 24 hours at that point? You're still looking at that 7 to 2 a.m. benchmark. So, help me under, I'm a little bit lost here. Um, a modified district, I have two officers on. So I, I guess I'm not being clear. And, and so you've got one officer on days. So if you're in essence working two shifts from seven to or seven in the morning to four or five at night or in the afternoon, and then from like say two or four in the afternoon to two a.m. would be your night shift, and then you'd have that split shift from eleven to nine or whatever was going to be most beneficial for that expanded district where you have double coverage in that midterm kind of piece. So you'd still have only two officers on with that split coverage. In the town-wide model, you'd have two officers on days from that seven to five, two officers on on that night from like that four to two, or five to two a.m., four to two, excuse me, four to two a.m. kind of benchmark with no overlap. Uh, and what am I doing with the others? Again, I mean, so working 10-hour shifts, and that would rotate around. If you've got that extra, that where, say, like on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, where your calls for service are more larger due to people coming and going, drunk driving, whatever, in the case may be, you could also bridge that gap and have that split officer, it's what they used to do too in, in Randolph as well, especially mm -hmm. on Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, have that split officer and you'd actually have, you know, instead of two, you'd have that third kind of Roman as is as one. So an officer could only cover four 10 hour shifts. Correct, for that 40 hour and benchmark so, or that work. Yeah. Right. And you're talking seven and you days need a week. seven days a week, yeah. right? So you're going to seven days a week. You're not doing. You're no, you're right. picking up those weekends that you're not covering now in the in the modified or with the extra officer actually in the first one. Correct. 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 You you answered my question. They're working oh, seven to five. Yeah. Seven to five is ten hours. They yeah. do it four days a week. Is that right? Correct. correct. Could you maybe in the next meeting come out with like what like a proposed schedule would be? Maybe that would help us all understand it a little bit better of how you how you're covering things in there. So how sure if you say you had ten and a half FTEs, sure. you know, what would your proposed say schedule be? Sure. Um, obviously that can change however your needs are, but just a just a thought that would sort of break it up so we could see it. I'm going more towards the you're you're right, we need to understand it. I was thinking more of the how are you how are we gonna explain this to 
you know, this like board in the public. Like, so if you just say, well, I got two officers on, and, and under this scenario, I got two officers on, people are just like, like I was just like, wait a minute, what are you doing with the other four? I can do it with a mess shoulder if I have to. Having <laughs> <laughs> the schedule is a great idea, and I think the vehicles is a good idea to put it down so they know. Well, in this scenario, you've got, you have the potential for two vehicles overlapping, right? Because you're, you're two coming off and you're two right. coming on aren't necessarily going to time right. I think there's two pieces of capital that need to be somehow incorporated into these budgets. One is their capital vehicle purchases or capital equipment purchase, call it what you want to be with rifles, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. and, and the other piece ought to be at least some sort of a set aside fund for a public safety building um, or for the police department because what they, that, that decrepit thing that they have over there just isn't, if we're going to take this into the next century or whatever it may be, right? They got to think about it. You, you can't fit ten police officers in that building, right? You know, and, and you know, and if, if, yeah. if crime is that rampant, you need a real jail, right? You know, and, you know things such such as that. But I mean, look in the floor it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> right, right. The, 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 the handcuffing them to the to the wall isn't quite probably. I'm sure there's someone that will probably say that this is some kind of a violation that, that, that that's there, you know. So, anyways, but I think that. To have a realistic budget, and and, and say it does go town wide, I'm not for that, but say it does go town wide, right? Well, I think you have to have some sort of capital budget, so you have have expenditures of how you're going to do it, and how you're going to have a building that adequately address addresses their needs. How you're going to have a equipment replacement cost, and how that's going to happen, because we just can't. To me, I'm, I'm a capital planner, right? So I I, I set up five and seven year capital plans yearly. And I, and I look at it and say, how would we, how would we put this and, 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 and really be upfront versus, well, you know what, i got to run to the select board, we need another million bucks to build a building, right, or, or whatever, whatever we need to do. But at least if there's a certain fund in there, yeah. you know, water department has it, they have a capital fund, right, that, they, that, that, that comes out of their rates. Everybody does. Your wastewater department has it, has a capital fund that comes out of the rates, and I don't think the police department should be any different. Well, at what point... Um, are you, I mean, you've got to be just about maxed out where you are now, mm -hmm. right, with what you got going on. So even looking at going to the modified, you're going to have extra strain. Mm -hmm. and, and just so we're clear, like, we haven't had the conversation about embedded mental health worker yet or what space right. that's going to require and what that looks like. So I, I think you're... So I think there's a lot more. I think more you go to, to that modified program, you're out of space. Right. I, I just think or, there's, there's a lot more space, is that what you're yeah. about? To, to, to look at, to come close. out with what would be somewhat realistic than just saying, oh, we're going to expand the district, it's going to cost us uh, this much money, or we're going to the same, or it's going to cost it. <laughs> well, what's the realistic number that the taxpayers right. are going to have to pay for in, in, in thinking about at least, if anything, maybe not even the building, although. I, I doubt your air handling in that building is even up to any code. Uh, just, just saying. What? <laughs> what? It's, it's, it's oh all. yeah, you get a fan. That's I right. Got a fan, fan. It's, it's good to go. Down. Down. It's <laughs> right, right, right. right. But, but, but I'm just saying. So you know, but at least having a capital equipment account, you know, to, to, because we know that. Let's face it. The amount of salt the treaty the treaty puts on the roads for us out there. And on the I don't do the roads anymore. <laughs> Got out of that. So just but to be you know, clear. vehicles don't vehicles <laughs> just don't last Your five or seven years in Vermont before they're rusted out. You know, and you know, and, and then you guys put a lot of miles on in a year. They're running well, as long as you want. Determine like three years is your is right. your useful life, and right. we've got one vehicle at least. Well, well two, right? Because the other one's a twenty. So anyways, I just, I just think that if we could enhance those pieces of the budget, and I'm not saying that you have to come up with an exact number, but you have some thought to go into it. It's like, okay, for a new police building, it's going to be, I don't know, what it costs you for a firehouse over there, right? Two and a half million. Huh? Two and a half million. Right, the Wayne King building cost $4 million to build that, and that was about 30 years ago, right, or whatever time was. That's getting on some time, you know, but not that they need, not that you need something that large, but... I will say the singer chapel was never a good thought.
but, but <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but but still, I mean, what are you what are you gonna do? And and then where is it located? You know, and, and you know, I, I know where I I think it would go, and I, but I've been trying to sell the town to move that to move that property on on what's it Prince Street, wherever the, the chimney is over there, to you know, because it's a it's a nice piece well, of did town. We had that. that was one of the final locations when they were doing the study for the new station. Closing up police station. Yeah. Yeah. That was the location, I think, that was in the lead. I know, this, I, know I, I, I rebuilt that them. roadway back when, and then I put water and sewer Pearl over Street. to the edge of right away just so you would have to tear up the road to hook it up or whatever you're going to build there. But that was because yeah. there was some part of this. Tear the heck out of it when we build on it. Um, so. so when we look back at this, the town-wide budget, then we would need to um, add four vehicles to that model. Replacement one and three additional, mm -hmm. right? You and equipment. Only four vehicles for the whole thing. No, we're adding four. No, adding, adding four onto the three or four that you already have. Yes. Yeah. And four. then your um, six officers in that one would need all the equipment and whatnot. Is that yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. you have two and one now. Yeah. So So these models that we have here are just a chief, a certain number of law enforcement officers, an admin, and some part-time. What are the models that you've had or looked at that include, um, we've heard mental health workers, we've heard a community service officer that doesn't have to have any of the law enforcement trainings and whatnot, well you'd want some with what you're in, but more to answer the questions of I don't know, I didn't really understand the that one when it came up, but it was more of to answer the basic questions of, I need help with this, where do I go? Um, not necessarily a crime has been committed or I've got a bad check or things like that, but just sort of the where do I get the paperwork to file in small claims court. So that's always been kind of more of the hands-on with the admin or, and or dispatchers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones that are kind of dealing with those, hey, I got a question about whatever. Here's the resources for that piece. It's not a embedded social worker because they don't have that kind of specialized training or any shape or form, but they're the go-to, hey, you need a uh, statement form, here you go. You know, uh, you need a crash report, here you go. You know, those kind of parts and pieces, they've always kind of been dubbed out towards those admin dispatchers. You know, is it something that we tack on another admin for, like a night shift kind of part piece? I, I don't think these models that we played out really kind of specified those kind of roles. And I don't know that you have to make that service available, you know, mm -hmm. that many, you know, 20 hours a day. You know, I guess what I would... You know, and that's going to be a piece to talk about, you know, down the road, too, is that if we go to a town-wide service, you know, and, and we kind of briefly touched upon it about uh, Perry City not being able to handle any longer of our calls for service. Do we need to expand? Do we need to have our own dispatch center? You know, those are all going to be parts and pieces that, you know, would probably have to be brought up into kind of some kind of discussion forum. You know, for, and do we bring in the fire departments for those dispatch services? You know, would that cover costs or, you know, all the above? But now you're talking around the clock coverage as opposed to just Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. And if you're going to take on the fire department, we can't schedule those calls. Um, right. And, and that's why I said it'd be 24 coverage as opposed to right. 7 to well, 2. And I guess that's... Right. Right. It's exploring what that looks like. Like, what's the contract for the increased service versus the cost of another employee mm -hmm. to go full time? Um, I think with the other model, realistically, for the size, scale, scope of where we're at, we're talking about whether we share it with another entity or not. When the Barry Montpelier model came up, I don't know if something Northfield has. Any 
any deep desire. If there's anybody, a natural partner, to share the cost, I think we're definitely contracting for that service. And it's probably some kind of on-call type of service mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to house somebody. Because the space needs that exist over there is um, out of seats here even that are preformed even once the appraisers move out. Um, and so if we had a community service officer, I don't. We're parking them in this room or somewhere else if there isn't the space over there. And in addition to I just think it's going to be easier for that kind of entity to find somebody who they could then deploy somewhere else in a full-time capacity or rotate resources through. Because it took the very much like to find the social work piece. It took them a very long time, I think more than a year. And then they had like a street outreach model that's a little bit different. So we just may have to pick. And it might even not be that we pick between this or that. It might be what's available. Mm -hmm. Does that work? Um, and then we go with that. So some kind of contract for service would, would be that model. For now, yeah. yeah. To get your foot in the door. Uh, some of it is, I mean, this is where I think municipalities generally are the mental health, social work, substance use disorders. Those are that's not our business kind of a thing. We don't have any grounding in it training in it, background in it, right. except for what we picked up along the way. Make sure the roads are plowed, that when you need a cop, a cop comes. If there's a fire, fire truck rolls, that, you know, enforcement. Some of these things that we're being asked to take on, at some point there's going to be some kind of reckoning with the state or somebody that says, we're going to need the resources and or you need to pick up your piece. Um, because for us to try to fold it in there, we're now doing something brand new that isn't really in our wheelhouse. I think it's difficult to ask a police officer to take a mental health role. I think, as a matter of fact, I think it's impossible because that's not where their training is. That's not they're trained to to you know process or at least enforce the laws that are that are on that are on the books. They're, they're not there to be a mental health counselor or a social worker or any of that. So I think it's difficult to to say we're going to embed one versus uses the services that are already there. Whether whether they need more more support or not, you know, I can't say the mental health gets one hundred percent of the support that they need. I, I don't think that they do at all. However, I don't think it's a role for the Randolph Police Department or any police department to, 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 to try to take that piece of it on. You know, it's a it's in certain regards, it's you know, well, it is. It's a, it's a disease. We have a psychiatric hospital that's 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 located in Berlin. There's special roles for. The, This is a role of a police officer, I think. Now, if they see someone, they say, you know what, I think this person is really kind of having difficulties. Um, I'm going to give a call to Clara Martin, or give a call to whoever to, to come help, or Safe Line, you know, yeah, you may, you may want to call Safe Line or whatever it might be, and maybe make that recommendation. But to say that they, they, they should take that on their shoulders as part of the town function, I don't agree. And some of it's the more specific is that we, the municipality, we just, we don't have any background in being a social service entity on top of it. So now we're trying to recreate or create something that works for us. And we get this pressure with some other things. People want to take us on from energy coordinating to any other kind of sort of community-oriented things. So it's just... Well, grant management. Grant management. So we're trying to keep folding these things that are... I think there's more today's law enforcement role has more social service to it than 20 years ago. Yeah. I think there is a mm -hmm. certain amount of that that they need. I think it's when you get beyond that that you have the challenge. So mm -hmm. being able to communicate with people, being able to suss out kind of what's going on, having some level of compassion for what the person's going through, and if they just need a little bit of direction or a pat on the back or whatever, that's to me is different than the level of care needed sometimes for folks that goes beyond that. I think that's where that seems to be the, the gap or whatever that folks are trying to figure out, is there a way for us to meet that next gap in services beyond what law enforcement really, kind of their role. And Trevor's right that this, this seems to be a model that's coming down, and, and I think it's needed. I have no doubt it's needed and it's beneficial to the people who receive it. The question is, 
whose responsibility is it then to provide for that service? And there's a real, a real strong feeling in the municipality world that this is being pushed down to mm. municipalities to handle versus the state handling. The state used to handle all this. They had a much stronger mental health program and whatnot, and it's being pushed down to the communities. And communities that don't have any law enforcement in them are struggling worse than we are with this. But, you know, what? I think that the question out there is, what does the what does the town of Randolph feel they need to address in this, and what does that look like? Do I think the state made, made a mistake of closing Waterbury and not actually just making improvements to what they needed to do there? And, and, and with it, they pushed a lot of things out to the towns to have to take yep. care of. You know, they, they've done yes. the same with nursing homes, right? But, you get an elderly population, but they won't let you build any more nursing home space. You know, and they say, well, the kids will take care of their parents, but that doesn't always happen. <clears throat> and, you know, and so, again, it's pushed off away from those services. Well, their laws you know. haven't caught up with that model. I can tell you that. No, no, but absolutely. I think the it's agencies, and, and there are numerous agencies that have the embedded social workers, is because they don't have any choice, basically. They had to do something. Um, is what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. In contracting someone out or figuring out like what you what gap you see that it needs, and maybe it's twenty hours a week, or it's an on call person, or from some resource to try to fill that gap. I'm just brainstorming because mm -hmm. I understood where he was coming. They were all talking tonight. So, and, and that was one call. I mean, you guys get yeah. the stats, and I have personally given you what we get for mental health calls. Yeah. And they're far in between. You know, can I put a full time social worker? No, no. not at all. Can I even right. put a part time? Right. That's going to be a stretch. Yeah, but not could every you find call. Somebody? Yeah. Well, that's why I was surprised to hear that like Clara Martin doesn't have you know, 24 7, 365 coverage. Well, it might be a conversation so, that we need to have with, with other departments. You know, maybe Royalton and Northfield and right. to share with Berlin. And to like, I don't know who all. And say, you know, what are you, what are you doing, and do you have? So again, you know, it's going to come back to where, you know, where I kind of put a stance down that I'm not going to start burning bridges with BSP. I'm also hoping to utilize their embedded social worker for whatever calls of service that we have. Why I want to also strengthen that partnership as much as I possibly can. That might be another avenue that we can travel. Uh, with that embedded social worker that the Royal Prince Barracks is supposed to be getting, whether they filled it or not, doesn't look at it that way, but it's supposed to happen at some point in time. And they had, it's been about a year and they haven't filled that yet, or had a successful candidate to mm -hmm. fill that role. Well, filling roles right now at the state is extremely challenging, I can tell you that. Yep. We yeah. haven't, we're not as competitive an employer as we were. Our wages aren't keeping up and our benefits are being surpassed by everybody. So there really is no golden exactly. benefit to coming yeah. to work at the state and we're just getting right. outperformed by well, to be honest people. With you, it's not just the state. No. It's every every entity out there, what it what it's costing to operate. And <coughs> you know, you know, we we all take a little bit less insurance. You know, you know, you know you just you know, it, every everything is just gone. And we'll see it in the reappraisal, right? Mm -hmm. What's, what, are the, what are the housing prices going to be when this all comes out? You know, just who knows? You know, but but the you know the point of it is. When they left our place and told us what they thought it was about, I said, "Give me a check. It's yours." And they just laughed at me. I'm like, well, yeah, seriously. You know, the, other, the other thing is, like, you know, <laughs> go to the supermarket. Yeah. You know, I, I left I left Shaw's up in Berlin just because I worked near there, so I. Went to Berlin Shaw's, hundred and seventy-two dollars, and I came out with two of my bags. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Hundred and seventy-two dollars. I used to make that much a week. Well, I think we've done a stroke um, of business tonight. I think yeah, that a lot. So. Let's go. <laughs> um, Thank you for this. What do we? What is your? If you had an estimate of. If we had a contract for that service, or the mental, I'm thinking the mental health or the social worker, or that piece of it, like if 
we assume Royalton isn't going to get mm -hmm. their position filled, and we were to share the cost of somebody. What's that cost? Say with like three. I mean, I would think if you don't quite have enough for a part time, then you're almost like at three. So let's assume for discussion, Northfield, Royalton, and Randolph went in together and hired one one person, right? And it that person. I mean, it's just hard because like. How do I go to work for you and I'm on call to three departments to go 24 7? Right. Right. Like, right. It, that's it just not sense. realistic. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, honestly, and Kristen would be the one that would be able to tailor what other departments are doing, uh, like VSP or other ones that have the embedded social worker. What does that look like? Um, I don't have that, nor have I worked with a embedded social worker. I've always relied on. Uh, Clara Barnes Center and things of that nature. So I don't know what that looks like. You know, would it be ideal and handy to have a social worker ride shotgun with me and deal with the mental health crises that I respond to? Sure, absolutely. But that's also fewer and far in between. As you saw in the stats, I had three last month as opposed to who knows what. But that could be changing next month. Um, you know, <coughs> It's hard to predict that, and especially with what you just said, how do you put a embedded social worker in charge of three towns? Like, we might be talking about two separate contracts, too. There might be sort of a social worker piece or a mental health care focused piece. And there might be sort of a street outreach worker, which has some of that training, that maybe hits on some of the substance abuse, slash, how do you plug into the support systems that make you show up in some kind of interaction? So we may even be trying to layer on those types of agreements that if we can contract with somebody or pay for service, they've got to figure out the 24-7 staffing. They can maybe pull from different resources. Uh, so we may even be looking at kind of two pieces for the same overall contract value. And I'm trying to remember what my wife said they pay for their proportion and share of those up there. Right? And we're talking about a much scaled back version of so what they were also talking about, say, for example, um, the Royalton Barracks was trying to partnership with the Clara Martin Center. That social worker was a Clara Martin worker, if you will, and was assigned to the Royalton Barracks. That might be another avenue where that would be a Clara Martin clinician that's assigned to the Randolph PD or Royalton PD or vice versa. Right, right, for so those that kind they would of have a rotating. But that's where that contract kind of piece comes into. Do they get like a stipend for responding to a Randolph calls or royalty calls or whatever? I don't know how that works. Mm. So we're trying to have one person respond to everything and they're getting crispy, so. Yeah. We, we so it doesn't work. And uh, <laughs> at Gifford, though, right, when they have somebody come in that needs those type of services, they call. And Claire Martin sends somebody there, or they don't Gifford do it has anymore. Their own social worker. Uh, they have their own, but yeah. it's usually screened out by Claire Martin Center. And more often than not, you're doing it via phone call or a Zoom meeting with the person that's out of control. This, that, the yeah, other thing. That's about that. Right. 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 Typically, yeah. seriously, in the industry, typically they send send a set of nurse to watch. Keep the person safe. You know, we have what we call, you know, it's it's at CVP as Central Month. We, we we have you know a certain amount of rooms that are safe rooms, right? So they you know they're set up with as psychiatric rooms, and, and 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 with it they may be held in there until the next disposition happens of where where, where they're gonna go. Sometimes they're in there for several days. Sometimes they're not. However, um, and 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 Gifford has in their ED. They have a room or two that they have the roll down to protect all the oxygen on the wall and all the things that they have to protect, and, oh. and they can protect that room if it detects you requirements. Yeah, you should, you know? they, they have lockable cabinets, but that's about it. Well, they didn't put the roll downs in, in that? So, anyway. And it's um, one room. Yeah. It's one room, at least. <laughs> I thought they were going for two, so I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not up to get for days. I know what we have at, at, at Central Vermont. You have a nice facility at Central Vermont. 
No, it's just that much larger. You know, but you have that many secure. more people and that many more that many more issues, if you will. But it's um, secure. Where Gifford is not right. secure, why we have to deal with them running out the ER every chance they get. You know, the difficulty is is that the, 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 it's the type of hospital, right? So there's CAH hospital, critical access hospital, um, versus a say a more full service hospital. So critical access twenty five beds a year, basically. Critical access hospitals were sort of around to stabilize you, and if you if you had something that was beyond a certain level, then they're going to helicopter you or take you to the to the to, to a bigger place that's that has more capabilities, you know. And, and Vermont has you know 14 hospitals, of which I want to say eight of them at least are CAH hospitals, you know. So they don't have that that type of type, that type of service. To a UVM medical center has two complete floors. I want to say probably 60, 70 beds that are IPP inpatient psychiatry beds. Yeah. So, so with that, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a challenge though either way because a, a place like Gifford, they're setting a nurse down or maybe calling for the police department to come and watch over this person until the next disposition happens. Also, the toughest part to 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 embed is if, like Scott says, so this month we had three calls that we may have been able to use, uh, you know, a mental health professional on, and, and so you may have had three calls. And those three calls might have encompassed, say, six hours, two hours apiece, or whatever. So have to employ someone for six hours a whole month, you, you know, right, right, you know, you know, that's uh, that, that's that's hard to do, you know, to, to find that that person. I'm not doubting that. Too bad somebody doesn't want to start a new company of, right, just having these people on staff they can send to different locations. You can't afford the liability insurance on that. Well, at the travel time. <laughs> yeah, right, there's, you know, there's a lot of liability there, you know. There is no perfect answer on so that one. Sure. Uber, you just look to see who's nearby. Right, like, okay. what is the dating app that you can, t is it's it Tinder? <laughs> where you can see who's near you or whatever. <laughs>